So today we're here again with Mr. George Juhas, and George brought Mr. Dave Roberts. Uh, now we just met. Correct. So can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'd love to. I, um, I'm an advocate for common law and uh, constitutional, constitutional law, and I've been doing this for 35 years. I started out taking on the IRS in a lawsuit for grand theft. And uh, it was dropped on a technicality, but through the uh, six-month process of taking the IRS through court, they robbed me of fourteen thousand uh, dollars. I uh, figured out how to remove myself from the matrix, and I haven't paid income taxes in thirty-five years. So, okay, <laughs> that—that's a lot right off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> so that was. Uh, so what started that though? Um. Well, it was interesting. Uh, over the course of uh, 10 years or so, different people came walking through my life telling me, you don't have to pay income tax. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I always got to pay income tax. I don't know. You know, my dad, you know, he raised me to pay income tax. And I'm like, but, you know, it's a nuisance. And then I had this event where um, in um, 86, I didn't, uh, I pay, I filed my income tax like a good U.S. citizen should. And uh, the IRS sent me a note that said, uh, you forgot to include the $6,000 you earned on this uh, side job. I go, what $6,000? I go, well, the $6,000. And they sent me this uh, 1099, or not 1099, but uh, 10, yeah, uh, 10, four, no, okay. well, anyhow. They sent me this form and uh, I'm like, oh, so I got paid a commission of $6,000 I never got. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Why am I filing income tax if you already know my income? If okay. you already know what I, I have do, why am I bothered filing? Why didn't you just send me a bill? Right. You know, so that was, that put me on edge, so to speak. And then uh, in 89, I started my own business. And that year, I, I, I didn't earn any income on paper. And uh, so I'm like, well, if I didn't earn any income, why go through the hassle of filling out the 1040 saying I didn't earn any income? So a year later, I get this notice in the mail from the IRS saying, hey, you didn't file your income tax. You have to file. I wrote back and I said, didn't get it, didn't earn any income. I'm not, you know, there's no need to file. And they go, Oh yeah, you have to file. Oh, by the way, here's a six thousand uh, six hundred dollar fine. And I go, <laughs> a fine? Yeah, you didn't file. I go, you can't create something out of thin air when there was zero to be filed. Well, the law says you have to file. And I'm like, well, I'm not paying it. You know. Yeah. So another year goes by, and then they uh, uh, put a twenty one day notice to lien. Not a lien, but a 21-day notice to lien. And when I went, I said, oh, I'll just go down to the bank and get my money out. I went down to the bank. The banks already froze all my accounts. And this is in the 80s? Yeah, early 80s. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, I talked to some patriots and they said, oh, you, gotta, you, you can't take this line down. You got to file a claim against the IRS and uh, you got to sue them for uh, grand, grand theft. So that's what I did. Went down to federal court, filed for grand theft, was introduced to a magistrate, and he had me come in every month for case review as the case progressed through the six-month uh, preparation for trial. And we'd have these conference meetings with the, uh, with the uh, Department of Justice, the attorney that was assigned to the case. And um, so I learned a lot just hanging around the magistrate's office. And uh, in the meantime, I went and I was studying everything because I knew nothing. I knew nothing. I was walking, talking idiot. And uh, so I stumbled across uh, two books. He hasn't called me that yet. An idiot? A walking, talking idiot. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> Give it time. So, yeah. uh, any All good uh, friends. <laughs> yeah. I have to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> So I went, um, I ordered these two books from Len Meredith from uh, Huntington Beach, California. And uh, one was uh, How to Cook a Vulture. 
and the other one was uh, Vulture and Eagle's cl uh, Clothing. And between those two books, I figured out how to write an affidavit of claim against the IRS uh, because it's all based in fraud. The whole process, the whole uh, uh, 18 USC laws are all based in fraud, or 26, 26 USC, those are IRS laws, codes. They're all, it's all fraud. Okay, okay. so before you go on, right? A lot of these are concepts people are unfamiliar with. Yeah, absolutely. So is there like a quick and easy way to get us up to snuff with, what do you mean by fraud? What I mean by fraud is that it's in direct violation to the Constitution. In the Constitution, our founding fathers wrote the Constitution for all men to be free and not to be inhibited or encumbered by taxes. The government is allowed to charge taxes, but not to the people. The people are supposed to be unencumbered by anything imposed by the government. And since 1933, March 9th, 1933, they have enslaved us in this encumbrance of, of uh, indentured servitude through taxes, through uh, regulations, stipulations. Like we're not, we're, our unalienable rights, which are given by God, not by the government, allows us to go on the highways unencumbered. To, just so you know, also, it's, it's called natural law, which is our founding fathers were pretty brilliant because they knew that there'd be immigrants from all around the world that may not have the same God they worship. <clears throat> they might have used it for the basis of all their laws and all of our rights, but they didn't say John 3.16 you know, through the stop sign. They didn't, right. say, they just based it on that. And uh, so we hear them say it's God given rights. And I'll say that because of my, my doctrine says, I'm going to call him God, but it's left open. You'll read it in the constitution as natural law. Also that's, so that's, that's just a good point. So people don't get turned off in case they haven't become, they haven't come to some God or some spirituality. Just know in the constitution, it's read as natural law. So. What was the thing that happened in 1933? Okay, Delano Roosevelt and the international bankers, the cabal, uh, which is a slow drip, okay, like boiling the frog, yeah. you know, starting in cold water and slowly turning up. This goes all the way back to uh, before we were a country. And uh, in 1913, they created the 16th Amendment, and they went into the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve is a private bank owned by international bankers. Not, It's not a government institution. This is all the stuff like Ron Paul talks about, right? right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, the Federal Reserve? Yeah. Yeah. So in 1913, they brought in the 16th Amendment, and then they, under international law, had to wait 20 years to see if there was going to be any objections or uh uh, counterclaims against the 16th Amendment. So nothing happened in that period of time. And then in 1933, 20 years later, they rolled out their agenda and they took all the people's gold and gave it to the Federal Reserve, which went to the, the IMF. Where was it before that? It was at Fort Knox. And people could own gold. People could own their own gold. After 1933, they weren't allowed to have possession of gold or silver. And then they turned us on to Fed notes, and we've been using Fed notes as our currency in this country since then. And Fed notes are promissory notes to pay a debt. Now, how do you pay a debt with a debt note? You don't. That's how the. That's why the uh, uh, debt of the United States government keeps going up because we keep paying debt with debt notes, which just inflates the debt. So I got to tell you something. I, I had court the other day and kind of tying into this, they, they, it, they're bold. You'll hear them refer to us as chattel. They're not, they're not, you might, if, if you haven't been into court, you might not have. They call us, I could say, I pronounce it poppers. What's the right pronunciation? 
<clears throat> when they call it, if we don't have the money or the gold and silver, they call us poppers or popper, poppers. Poppers? Uh, indi- popper. Like they, a popper, like a poor person? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Popper. They, they call you an indigenous. Yeah, that and Indi- pop- indigent. 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 Yeah. And I, Wait, so when you went to court, you had to take gold? No, no, no. no. I, I probably would be better off, but I'm just saying I read some of their documents that I didn't want to sign and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. But, All right. So let me, so let me like get, get people up to speed. So last time you were here, mm-hmm. um, you were uh, in a kerfuffle yep. with the Tunkhannock school board. Mm-hmm. And somehow that whole experience that you guys were going through has now led you to the air quote legal system. Yep. yep. Can you, can you tell us how you got from that to, to court? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I have a, uh, an offer to make here today and I would, I would offer a hundred thousand dollars, but I don't have it. So people won't trust that I mean it. Right. Um, but a thousand dollars is somewhat reasonable and maybe should make people want to go out and look. But just to start, I'm going to go back to October 26th of 2022, and I'll be real short and get us up to speed. But on October 26th, 2022, if anybody can go up to Wyoming County, Tonkanic, Pennsylvania, and find a crime or harm or trespass, a wrong that I've done that's somewhere on a record that somehow gave the authority to someone else to make me unfree, I'll give them $1,000. Anybody I've offered to tell the police, all the sheriffs, you know, anybody. So what happened that day? So on the night of the 26th, I was standing in front of my school board, getting ready to redress them with grievances. When you express what you are, your standing, your status, your jurisdiction, if you don't express your law, if you don't express your rights, don't defend them, you've got none. You understand? So you literally have to stand on them. Um, No, that means like. You have to know how to, oh, so an example would be yesterday, I record it in court, but you're not supposed to be able to record in court because there are signs everywhere that says don't record in court. Well, guess what? Everybody who consents to that, they're consenting. I'm not consenting. I was wired up. I recorded every inch of it. And I brought, you only allowed so many people in the courtroom. I had 17 in the courtroom. This thing was four times the size of this room. I had people standing in there because I literally made, if you would, my own court of record. Because they don't want it on record at that lower court because that's where all the, they throw up on each other and they got to get cleaned up for the next level court. So they don't want to know all the bad stuff that just happened in this lower court. So they don't call it a court of record. They don't want it on record. So I think what people, so, okay. So, what? so, so October, they 20, trespass you. So I'm sorry, let's go back. October 26th. I said, I'm here to, to redress you as the man, one of the people from Wyoming County with grievances. And I started talking and my four minutes ran up. And they tried to stop me. I said, I have five pages of a maladministration to read to you. This is me redressing my government. I don't, I, I, your rules, laws, and statutes don't bind me. Not that I'm anything different. Because even if I was a 14th Amendment citizen, you know, and I wasn't acting as one of the people, because in fact, we're all 14th Amendment citizens, unless you know how not to be. Because the 14th Amendment citizen is what gives you the kerfunkel to be stuck underneath them. Because as one of the people, you are over your functionaries and you're actually consulting and instructing them. When your functionaries create and put biscuits underneath them, like driver's license, hunting license, fishing license, registrations for cars, guns, students, marriage license, marriage license, you now go beneath your functionaries to get those. Like, oh, look at those biscuits. They tell us we have to do this. We have to consent. We're governed by consent, right? We've heard that a hundred times or a million times. Americans are governed by consent. Ex- explain governed by consent so right. people understand. Well, here's a perfect example. The, the They tell you you have to do this thing. You can't record in the courtroom. Mm-hmm. Well, I sure can. I have freedom of press, freedom of speech, and I need to be able to record this. I, I want this on the record. This is my court. Well, well so so freedom of press is is in the constant, in the- in the First Amendment, in, no? Right. It's not to say reporters have that. Mm-hmm. we're all reporters. everyone has we are all okay. reporters this is the way that because in the beginning there was no cnn freaking 240 some years right, ago right it was us being able to report the bad stuff that our, our functionaries were doing we have a habit of calling them our government right they are our governmental bodies mm-hmm. all right and so by nature a lot an ambulance in an old law dictionary would be a two-wheeled cart that picks soldiers up from the battlefield an ambulance. An ambulance. Okay. If you look at a dictionary today, it changes, right? It's, right. it's not the same thing. So the words, 
So that we have to be very careful the words that we use and the context of the time period too. You have to be smart enough to do that. So you, being a 14th Amendment citizen means your mother checked the box when you were born. So that makes you a citizen. City and Zen is municipal servant, right? Citizen, municipal servant. So you become a municipal servant. If you got a mailbox and you got a, a zip code, your mailbox in front of your house is like an umbilical cord back to D.C. because that zip code relates to a district in D.C. It looks like you domicile in D.C. and you're residing in commerce at that mailbox. The mail is from the United States Postal Service, French owned, and it provides services for all of the citizens and the territories of D.C., which is P.A. dot V.A. dot. If you want to be one of the people, you can't use those services. You got to use the post office, which is Pennsylvania spelled out, no zip code. Don't use your post, don't use your mailbox. A post office box at the post office isn't even, it's a contract. You just want general post office. Like John Walton goes to the mailbox, I'm sorry, goes to the post office when he was in the movie saying, hey, you got any mail, any post for John Walton, right? Because mail is a, uh, Mail is, in fact, a martial law word, and it's a certain bag that they would use to transport, you know, if you would, information around to the territories during martial law. Post is for the people. Mail is for the servants. So it's a way of shaking something. So I shake some of these little things, right, to eventually get to, the, to where I want to be. And I got a long journey because he's like 103. He's been doing this for 75 years. <laughs> So I got, a, I got a long ways to go. Um, he yells at me a lot, by the way, as you can tell, is the earlier gesture. And, and sometimes he almost wants to apologize, says, please don't apologize. I learned best under pressure. Yeah. You know? So, so anyway, so let me go back to 20 to the 26. So I was standing there clearly with tons of confidence. I am not a 14th Amendment citizen. They're not going to talk to me like I'm underneath them. But you learned something prior to that. You learned... Uh, a different way of approaching right. I your was, school board because there's a lot of parents mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of taxpayers and citizens who don't yeah. know the proper, how it's supposed oh, yeah, to yeah, be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. that's a good point. So like citizen advisor of Pennsylvania was something- Yeah, we had Jamie on here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was part of the original body that started that, right? So me and Jamie got together. My school board was being aggressive. His wasn't yet. I said, they will be soon. So just know they're going to shut you down. Because when you have success in their statutory world, they want to shut you down. So they're start pulling at their, their policy. So I'm like, you got to be ready to go at their policy. So it, my beginning journey against my school board was me taking their own policies and hitting them over the head with their policies. And I was having success. And I could tell I was, I'm like, oh shit, they're, they're going to try to stop me. You know, because I had two lawsuits against them that I couldn't afford that we have to fundraise for and 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 the, like the group like Citizen Advisor or helping fund. One lawsuit would crush me coming my way, you know, and they know this because <clears throat> like the school board president told me no less than 12 times, sue us, sue us. Hey, you can't change the meeting from this date to this date. Sue us, sue us. They want me to get into their court because when I get into their court, I, when I sue them, I'm suing them as an entity and I'm the entity because a man can attack a man in court and a paper can attack paper in court, but a man can attack paper and a paper can attack man. And this is stuff that I learned. And when I realized I was in trouble uh, by playing in their field as being entities, right? I can't afford an attorney. So I'd have to get an attorney to rep represent my papers because I'm the, an entity. Your paper is considered your entity that's behind you, your corporation, right? Your corpse, corporation, entity. It's all a fiction. Straw man. Straw man. So then I have to get an attorney to represent my paper in court against the school district entity, right? And that costs a ton of money. Everybody makes money on that. If you, both attorneys, no matter whether you win or lose, make money based on all the bonding and the surety and all this crazy stuff that happens behind the scene. So immediately I realized I got to stop being an entity. I got to be a man, right? So if you're one of the people, you're being the man versus in the matrix that he talks about, you're in the corporation. Um, I have to learn this. I have to get away from trying, because only you, it's a 98% failure rate in court with paper. So 2% is being one. A bunch of stuff might be getting pleaded, but the win rate is like 2%. And that's authoritative people who like to play attorney. They get lucky. No, it's but done he, deliberately. So, and some of them might get For lucky. money, 
Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 there's so much bonding going on behind the scenes. Uh, they can't take on the liability of letting you go because then the surety, which is you, walks out the door free and clear. And when you walk out the door free and clear, then they have to eat that bond. All right. And that bond's worth millions of dollars. I'm going to quickly get us to where he's at. So I, I, I will not allow yeah, myself. Because you got to realize like, I know a little bit about this yeah. and these two guys know a lot less than I do. Let me just tell you about the, uh, so the, so the incident. So I tried to speak. They didn't want me to do maladministration. This is the one in October? October 26th. Okay. They didn't want me to speak. Maladministration is very serious, right? And I even start using some words. I looked at the solicitor. I'll pretend you're him. Mm -hmm. and said, Mr. Solicitor, I am not talking statutorily tonight. I am being one of the man, one of the, I'm being one of the people of Wyoming County. I'm George, I'm the man, George Andrew Uhas, and I'm not here to speak in your statutory arena. I'm here to stand on my constitution and be in common law with the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights. So, the, so okay, so there's almost like two, correct me if I'm wrong here, there's almost like there's two legal paths in the United States. One no, is statute. No, there's only one legal path, and then there's lawful. Legal is statutory, lawful is common law, is constitution. God's law. God's law. The supreme law. Say that again. So go ahead, David. Okay. There's one legal and one lawful. Right. There's the constitution, our founding fathers created the Declaration of Independence, which created the country yeah. of the United States of America. Without that, there is no country. Then the Articles of Confederation of Perpetual Union. All right. Then the Northwest Ordinances. And then the Constitution of 1787, that those documents, those are our organic founding documents that were created a republic form of government. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then in 1789, they created a corporate constitution. And that corporate constitution created two governments, one being of the republic and the other one being of a corporate franchise with King George. And when they did that, they did legal and they did lawful. Lawful being uh, under the Republic, uh, under the Constitution, the laws of the Constitution, the laws of the Bill of Rights. And then they created a, a legal society called the Bar Gill. You know, the Bar, British Accredited Registry. Yeah. That are agents to the Crown, not to us. They take allegiance to the Crown. And those in the Bar Guild created their own legal society. And then in 1933, they created the administrative courts. That's all the courts that you go into right now. They're municipal corporation courts. Wait, so let me ask a question because I'm yeah, just trying ahead. to get clarity on this because, you know, like we had you on last time and, yeah. and uh, I was like, I got to wrap my head around this because there was a lot I didn't understand. Oh, that actually clarifies. Wrap, wrap your head about what he said. You're <laughs> definitely going yeah. to explode. <laughs> so what you're saying is, so the, 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 the bar based, I'm going to use real generic terms here. The bar based later on created corporate government, if you will. Yeah. That is what all of our courts work under correct and when you go and and are participating in what you guys are doing you're saying i don't fall under that system i fall under this system yep. the original I, and i'm gonna tell you how i did all, constitutional all of system. us as a people yeah have the right to fall under the lawful government but we're tricked from birth to consent to this unlawful legal system and I'll give you a good example. This is my way of explaining it because I'm still way I'm I'm still way down. So I so I can almost translate to us, right? Yeah. So speak to me like I'm an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> wait, we wait. do every day. Wait a minute. That means you just called me an idiot. And, <laughs> like and, colors. And listen, and guess what, guys? Hey, listen. Yesterday in court, two times I said I am a legal idiot, and I looked a judge right in the eye. I'm a legal idiot. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because idiot means I do not understand law, their law. Their I don't. law. Okay. And, and so when they ask you, do you understand? No, I acknowledge, but I do not understand you, nor I, and I am an illegal idiot. So thank you very little. I can, I'm staying over here because that's like a trap. Mm -hmm. so, do you understand? <clears throat> no, I don't understand. Anyhow, so stand under. I remember that from last time. Yes. Yep. So this idea of so the way I explain it is King George gave the people their independence, mm -hmm. right? And he firmly put the the corporate side of America because we were really just one big fat corporation at one time 
all we had was a bunch of people trying to rob the land of every resource. Like there was shit on the ground that could be picked up and brought back to England and be sold. So we were a big corporate entity, right? You had the West Indies Company, the East Indies Company. They used to have their own armies and navies to fight for deep port or deep water ports, you know? And eventually there were some people, let's say like the Pilgrims, the Quakers, the Shakers, the Amish, they were, they were really enjoying this land and this freedom. And, you know, and then from that was born this idea of like, okay, we can do both things here. We can take things from this land and go help our miserable um, you know, past who burn down their own countries and use up all their resources wrongly. We can have the corporate side use maritime law to, in fact, make contracts back and forth, you know, make money. Because when you brought your potatoes to the to the shore, you want to get paid through contract, no matter if they get there or not, because you wasn't always guaranteed. So you need a corporate construct. You need a maritime law. I can't say this is all bad, but it was meant for corporations. It wasn't meant for the people. The people were meant to be free. The people are the government. We're a government of the people, by the people, for the people. We basically created the constitution to create a corporate construct to keep the corporations under control. We whip them in the shape. Hey guys, you're getting out of control. You're getting out of control, but leave us out of it. Well, our fun so we created a bunch of functionaries. We created the government. I'm sorry, we created the constitution, which created our form as a government. Mm -hmm. And we allowed them to cr create their own laws, rules, statutes, codes, if you would, to in fact keep them under control. Because we're, we're busy in yeah, the to, fields. To monitor themselves. Yep. Those statutes, codes don't apply to the people. They Literally, the Constitution binds them, not us. I know it sounds mm -hmm. crazy. The Constitution, uh, it, all it does is protect your natural rights. Yeah, the Constitution is a four-corner document. That is the rule book that the co that the government has to operate under, not the people. So here's the trick: the bill, the Bill of Rights, is our protection, but it's the rules that they have to abide by, not us. The only thing we have is unalienable, unalienable rights. We only have unalienable rights. But people are going to say that we have, okay, well, you're going to, you're going to be reckless then. you're going to be crazy, right? You're, 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 you're going to have a lawless society if you don't have laws, rules, and statutes that control everybody. Well, you, you, inside of common law, you do no harm. Trespass on no man. You can basically use the Ten Commandments even and say that's what you're supposed to be doing. You're going to be all right. And I get it. There are people in our society who need to be policed, who need to be uh, helped and they're supposed to do it. Elderly, handicapped, ad addicts, career criminals. These people need to be in, in the legal system and, and, and keep it right. But they've tricked everybody into the system and be through consent. Because remember, the people created the constitution that created the, the governing bodies. The governing bodies created all these rules and statutes, codes, registrations, and titles that we, the people, slipped underneath to get like dummies. So now it looks like they're in charge of us because they, in fact, that which creates it controls it. It's not just a maximum law. It's just fact. If I create a contract between us and it's in my favor, you follow it or you pay a penalty because I wrote it, you know, and that's what, what what's happening. But just because you, at birth you check this box and you've been checking it forever, you can stand today, never changing an administrative thing about your status. As long as you know the words that are coming out of his mouth and roughly out of mine, mine is just to decipher some of this because I still have, I, I'm, I told him I'm going to be his best zero to something student because I'm never going to stop. <laughs> I, I never, I only slept five hours. I'm never going to stop learning. I got to get it right for my family's sake because these people are after me hard. Let me go. October 26th, they wouldn't let me speak. I, I, I insisted on finishing. They were on my time. I said, where in the constitution does it say I have four minutes to redress my government grievances? Those policies bind you. They don't bind me. I'm here as one of the people and I have a redress of grievance to give you. I'm speaking from remonstrance, right? Remonstrance means a peaceful protest. You can petition your government when it's time to redress them, which means you use the court system. A petitioning to us, we think go around, get a hundred signatures. I can petition them for grievances, which means I use the court system to do it. I can use uh, address. It says you can address them with your grievance, which means you send them notes in the mail or post that lands in their district. Or I can do it through remonstrance. In the Black's Law Dictionary, remonstrance is a peaceful protest, which means you grab the mic, you don't let it go until you're done and you're going to listen to me. Well, they can shut it off, right? So I still speak over it to catch it on their mics. I won't stop. 
they recess. They go in the back and I, they war against me. When they use public money to go against the people, when you're, gov- when you're, this is tyranny, right? So when the governing bu- entities, your functionaries use your own money to war against you, to try to take your, your natural rights away from you that they're supposed to protect. That's warring against you. I know it sounds crazy, but so when I went to the next meeting and they had nine extra police officers and metal detectors that we didn't consent to, and there was no real threat, right? You, you can only stop somebody with uh, reasonable articular suspicion in the legal world and in, in the lawful world, in the constitution, you better have a freaking warrant or you better have a, 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 um, a probable cause affidavit, a signature that someone says, I saw him put a gun in his pocket or something stupid. You know, they had none of that stupid stuff. They're creating alarm where there is none because why? They've been trained during the pandemic to take a, a cr- create a crisis and then go solve it. You know, exaggerate something, create alarm where there is none, and then put an instrument in place to silence or to did, fix it. Did you threaten anyone that night? N- threaten nobody. I, I spoke just like this and maybe I had a, you'll get a chance to hear it because I'll need your help to see if my levels change. All I had to do is tell them, I just start reading my redress of grievances. That's all I did was redress my grievances. To, you know, I'm George Andrew Ewers. This is my letter of uh, mal- maladministration. And eventually they recessed. So he who leaves the battlefield first loses. So they were coming out hoping I sat back down, but I knew not to leave that podium because I've been trained. Don't leave the podium. They came back out. They're like, oh, he's still there. So they tried to talk over me and have the meeting. And I just went back. I said, you're on my time. I start reading my my maladministration. But you also, but you also said to them that like I have a five page document yep. to read. Yep, it was not def- like I'm going to read. I hear War, I, War and Peace. I'm yeah, going to. I have this is there's gonna, there's an end to this. I hear, and that's right. And I hear a good argument. Even my wife tries to have it with me. She says, "Well, come on. If everybody speaks more than four minutes, these meetings will take forever. Sometimes they're supposed to, right?" And I said there, I said, you know, I can hear that, but if these people can give me four minutes, next month they can give me three. Next month, they'll give me two, then one, and then zero. Because if, if somehow they can make, make the law, that's what they'll do. Because they, they've done it in that school. That school said we had three minutes per topic as long as nobody else was in line. And when they met me, they're like, shit, nobody's in line. He keeps coming back for another three. <coughs> I was the only one in the room, so I was just doing this, right? Yeah. And they, so they quickly went to a, a, a special meeting, which was illegal, and they're being sued for to change that and give you one time, four minutes, you're done. They can't do that. There are functionaries. They can't tell us what to do unless you consent to it. What, what's going on here with the school boards, not just that one, but all across the nation, what they're doing is they're creating law. They call it policy, but they're creating law. And then they are enforcing that law upon the people. And then if you don't conform and comply, then they're using the court system to punish you for non-compliance to their law. That's what's going on. They just had a court case in uh, July of uh, 2022 called West Virginia versus the EPA. And the uh, argument of the, uh, the majority opinion of the, of the case was that the um, EPA was creating law without the legislature in it, creating that law and putting it on the books. EPA was creating the law and they had their own courts. So they had their own law, their own courts and their own inf- enforcement. So That's against the constitution totally. The EPA is a cor- is incorporated. Our schools yeah, are incorporated. They're a private so that's, corporation. That's how it still fits. It's a private corporation that did this. Let me get away from the freaking 26. I'm still stuck there. Did nothing wrong. That was my best performance ever, if you would, because I do get it that, in fact, when I'm at a school board, that's all it is, is freaking theater. I know now that the minute I leave there, I just I just start hammering. The post is where you administer your government properly through the post, in my opinion. That's, that's where I'm at now. I just want to master the post office, not the United States Postal Service, but the post office. I get away from that date. Two days later, I get a a letter in the mail telling me I'm banned from the school. I'm not allowed to trespass. Well, we all know we're not allowed to trespass. So the wording is even bizarre. Like, thank you. I know that. But you can't ban me from the school for a year because I don't agree because they're trying to contract with me. They try to talk lightly about the potential law that I broke saying, you know, you were like, as they say in 
this code, you did this, this, and you were disorderly in this. Well, you, you know, you, you can never turn a crime. You can never turn my a exercise, right. A of right. a, my exercise of my of a right, or you can't turn a right or the exercise of a right into a crime or a sanction. You can't do it. So what they did was they sent me an ugly letter, a threatening extortion letter to a private citizen, telling me this is what this is a fact. This is the terms and conditions. Don't you come on here until a year from now. I sent it right back to him properly. I rescind this contract within 72 hours. I do not agree to your terms and conditions or directives. Sent it back to him with a constable. I did my job. I, I refused. They were trying to contract with me. That's what, the, that's what our government functionaries try to do. They try to contract with you with all these lower things. So the Amish don't like to be contracted. You think they want to live without electricity? No, they just don't want to deal with the contract. They don't want to contract with the English. And they call all of us English because we're all dealing in the English society, if you would. So I sent that back to him. I met him. We started hammering him with notices trying to, because as a man now, my right now, they're coming after me with extortion, with threatening letters. They yeah. can't do that. Not to a 14th Amendment citizen and not to one of the people. They can't do that. Not inside their own corporation. Unless I yield it, because I know people, in fact, that yield it and took the, took the year because they're doing it across the country where they're trespassing parents who speak up because they broke their policy, their law. Like, no, that's not how it works. So we get our first round. I put a claim against each one of them for $1.95 million. I'm trying each school board. Each school board, per, yeah. uh, the man and the woman, not the school, because here's yeah. the deal. Remember this. As a school board uh, member, they're an entity. Mm -hmm. that entity took an oath and I have all their oaths of office and I accepted their oaths of office with a special acceptance, which means I closed that contract with them. Cause if you took an oath of office as a school board member, you took it, it's open. Okay. What does it mean? I close it with an acceptance stamp and a notary saying, okay, now we are directly in contract with each other. It's, you left this contract wildly out there promising to do this. Well, we just went into contract with each other. Now you must protect my individual rights, which, you know? which they're bound by Article 6 of the Constitution, Clause 3, which says that all public officials have to have affirmation or an oath of office. So now I close the contract, right? I'm tightening that. I'm tightening up the noose, right? For the, they're, they are literally putting themselves up on the gallows. They're doing this. I'm just literally. Correct. They're, uh, they're poking board that they think they can poke. Now, if, if they can poke me the way they're about to poke me, they can poke anybody. I know it is happening, in fact, right? So I'm concentrating on me and my family right now. But everything that happens to me, good or bad, is going to happen to everybody, good or bad. So whether you're my opponent or whether you're my friend, whatever's happened to me is going to happen to you or can happen to you. So pay attention. So so I sent that all back. I sent, I noticed them. They got their claims. I'm going against the man. The reason I do it against a man and woman, because as an oath of office, you weren't allowed to shut my mic off because you just hindered my first amendment. Uh, right no, to, committed treason. Committed Let's treason. call it what it is. Yep. So by doing- By turning a microphone off. Yeah. That's treason. That's an act of treason. Because it's the people working with their government. And when a government can become tyrannical and control the people, that, that yeah. takes a claim. Under, okay. under the Declaration of Independence, it says whenever any form of government, including a school board, becomes destructive of these ends, these ends is life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We have the right, we the people have the right to abolish or to modify that government. And he has the right to stand up and bring notice May break claim, press a claim before them to bring about the change that needs to be brought about. And if they refuse, that's treason. So the claim he's talking about is the people. Uh, I get to file a claim against the other man. Back in the old days, if your cows came over the hill and ate my garden through the post, I notice you because we might live miles apart, you know? So I go to the post office and I send you your first notice. Hey, I got witnesses that this, your brand cow ate $300 worth of my food. I give you a proper notice saying you remedy this. I'll offer you remedy if I, in fact, have ever done wrong to you because you have to offer remedy before you ask for remedy. And then in I this say, situation, there is no, it's it's between two parties right now. It's right. between two men. They broke. Correct. They, they yeah, broke. There's no other parties this, involved. This is common law. They broke. This is God's law, natural law. Okay. Mano a mano. Not a corporation. You want to separate the people, the man 
from the corporation. And how you do that is by addressing the man or the woman. And how they did it, they did this because when they violated their oath of office, they had to take their veil of protection off in order to punch me in the face, which was my, you know, to harm me. They cause harm. That's what, that's what we call it, right? So it's harm. They took my property, my rights away from me. They trespassed and harmed me. Right. And because they can't do it as, as a school board member, they went, let me take this hat off real quick, harm this guy, put it back on. Okay, you just did it. Yeah. That's fine. But during that act, you were a man doing it to me because you couldn't do it. You took an oath of office. I have proof of it. Here's your first notice. If you don't respond, it's an, an unrebutted affidavit of fact is law. Can never be overturned by any court in the land. So an unrebutted affidavit or affirmation that doesn't get responded on is in what, fact, they're accepting that. And what is that? What is an un... So, okay. So I'm going to give them a notice and I'm going to say, you did this to me. This is, the, I, this is my witnesses. Here's my proof. Here's my evidence. I'll offer you remedy if I've done something, if you have a verifiable claim that I've done something to you okay. as a man or woman. An affidavit is a statement in, in fact that is true, correct, in law and evidence. And that is an affidavit or an affirmation. Okay. An affidavit is a bill of lading in, co in commerce. An affirmation is a uh, statement of fact. Legal and lawful. That is true, not in truth. Truth in opinion. What is it? What is true? And okay, is verifiable. So, so I, I got a question yeah. um, just because I'm trying to follow this and I know people listening are trying to follow it too. So my question was going to be until you said something about 30 seconds ago, uh, for you to have any kind of recourse against one of the individual school members, they violated a rule as a, a law as a school board member. So, no, no. which, no, no, well, no. and that, and this is, th that's where my mind was. Is uh, they okay. violated a rule because of their position as a school board member, mm -hmm. as an elected official, they cannot force you to follow XYZ. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is, is when they violated your constitutional right, my, my, they removed wait, that hat. This is hard because I still do what you just did. It's not a constitutional right. We, you know how many rights you have? You have all of them. You have all the rights. constitution only protects is very defined how they're not to offend our rights. So when you hear someone say woman's rights, gay rights, black rights, anything. So there are no constitutional rights. The constitution no, is no. just a list of rules as to how the government has to function in order to protect your natural rights, including if, the bill of rights. If they throw shit I'm in there, it. if they throw stuff in there, if it, it, like right now they're trying to give us parent learning right. and growing together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still like three steps behind Micah, but I'm getting there. So correct me if I'm wrong though. What you're saying is, is when they violated the constitutional rule that they have to follow as yeah. to far as how they can interact Protect with you're you. You're protecting your rights. That's they right. took off their school board member hat because they weren't following the rules anymore. And now they were acting as an individual person man. against you. Yeah, they're man not woman. No man, no mm -hmm. man, no woman is allowed to harm this is this is natural law no man no woman is allowed to harm another man or woman and if they do they got to offer remedy make that person whole let, let me make this real clear this will help if a police officer pulls you over mm -hmm. and puts his lights on and pulls you over and he comes up to the side of your car and you ask him did i harm anyone and he says no and then you ask him, well, then I trespassed on somebody's property, right? Correct. And he says, no, you haven't broken any law because there's only two laws. There's only two. No so trespass. Would, so what no would a speeding harm. law be then? A code. A code for the purpose of generating revenue. Against employees to the state or municipality, which you so, are when you get a driver's license. So the only person that's standing on the side of the road that broke the law is the police officer. Because he has violated your right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Under the Declaration of Independence, the government only has one function. Not all these construed things that they have created over mm -hmm. the last 240 years. They only have one function. And that function under the Declaration of Independence is to protect your unalienable rights. How are they doing right now? All right. So I never got past the 26th. So I get. Well, I, so, I, so, I, so just so I can explain to you real yeah. quick. Conceptually, 
these are things that are very hard for people to understand. But when you start to understand them, they need it to becomes understand. very simple to right, understand, right. Exactly. which is really bizarre. Right. Well, I, and 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 there's a lot of people out there. I mean, you got to think about it this way, man. It's like I've I've spent all my life in the monastery. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know what's outside. I, I, I have. Exactly. I get corrected every day. I'm with Dave. I get corrected. There's things I got to fix because I first learned. I know what I know to, I know more, right? So what I know is for today until tomorrow. So I just keep going. So when they banned me and I didn't agree to it, then I, w- I found out that Tunkhannock area high school, in fact, is missing on paper, $76 million unaccounted for to us, the people. Right? Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't tell I you that. We discussed yet. that last time, I think. That was, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, no, I don't... it was never a number. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I was, so I wanted to make sure that I, many people and many, uh, and many individuals, inst- institutes, corporations looked at this. Yeah. Nobody has said it's there. So, so he's means, not just making like a claim. He's like, no, there is the sky really blue. So what I'm saying is I don't know if they're putting money in their pocket. I'll never know that. I don't know if they got bass boats. I suspect because how big and clumsy these schools are, something went wrong somewhere. Mm-hmm. They were hoping the next year would just fix it up and it never and the fixed itself. Kept going downhill. And now some people are like maintaining their positions to try to get this fixed before they get out. And it'll never fix itself. Cause I, I've been part of the Wyoming County fair which had a very loose system because people run money up from the, from the ticket booth and throw it on your desk. You're like, Oh my God, you know? So that was just a small, clumsy little, um, it's fair. I can imagine what this massive school district budget does when they're trying to make things balance. They give you an audit every year. It says the audit budget <clears throat> on the first page. It says audit it budget. Every page thereafter says unaudited. it. What? How's that? How's that for fraud, huh? And here's something else: a budget is a tool that reflects what they want to spend in the face of the rep- of the face of the public. Okay, in other words, they want the public to see what they are spending. The books, the real books, is what people need to get behind because that's where the huge chunks of money are being cashed and stored. There are counts called CAFRAs. This is an acronym, C-A-R-F or C-A-F-R. And it's Comprehensive Accounting Financial something. That CAFRAs, all governments in the United States have CAFRAs. Some institutes have three, four, five CAFRAs. And what happens is when money is sent to an agency, and they don't spend it or they don't use it for what it's earmarked for. Like, for instance, uh, they're supposed to put a subway in. Well, they decide they don't want to do the subway. They're supposed to send that money back to the federal government. They don't. What they do is they keep it and they put it in a bank account and then they invest it in Wall Street. And then what? that, yeah. And that money mm-hmm. sits there in Wall Street, burning and turning. And the dividends and the interest and all of that that's accumulated, they skim that all off because they're not allowed to touch the actual money. Are you guys going to follow us home? The principal. The principal. (laughs) They're not allowed to touch the principal. They're not allowed to touch the interest earned, the dividends earned, the interest earned. They're only allowed to take that money. And then they put that in their pockets. Or they go on free vacations or they buy elaborate cars or send they you, send you to Harrisburg on, in the fanciest hotel instead of this little junkie hotel to right. save, save us taxpayers. Or, or, they, or they put the money into their campaign reelection fund. Is, has there been examples of this? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, this is documented. So on the 26th of October. I'm not saying that this particular situation. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But, but I'm saying but, is like, but, but my whole thing that I've realized is like, if you can find it in one place, it's, it's probably it's, not the only place. This is all over the United States. Yeah. You could take the CAFRA accounts in one county. Okay. Stop sending money to the state. Stop receiving money from the state. <clears throat> stop taking federal funding and you could live off the CAFRA accounts for the next 50 years. You know, I was, that's how much money is in these accounts. I was nervous in the past. Seriously? I, I Seriously. A piece of paper and pencil so I school can, boards. <clears throat> you could pay here. for school Wait, education. I'm, I'm just kidding. I thought maybe I should write a goodbye letter to my wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never heard of this. You could pay for all the county funding for the next 50 years 
You can pay the city municipality funding for the next 50 years. You can pay all the school districts for the next 50 years could nonstop. You, could you guys hold uh, airing this until after my next court case? Like that, yeah, you want to do it next week? <laughs> and I don't, I, I, we'll talk about that. Well, I want. No, I kind of no. want to know this how you got there. Out no, there. I'm just kidding. So this this is this is pretty deep stuff, and I got something to show you guys here in a minute. So because I know this stuff about the school, I've been pressuring them. So <clears throat> when your enemy is drinking from a poison well, you let him drink. You don't say, "Hey, don't stop, stop drinking mm -hmm. that." We have a fight tomorrow. You know, you let him drink. Makes tomorrow a little easier. So. I didn't capitulate completely to their uh, demands in their letter because I rescinded it, but I did do my job and asked for permission. May I have permission to attend the school board meeting? Knowing they were going to say no. no. Well, there's another claim. Can I please attend my son's? They said I can go to my son's basketball game. So I can go to my son's basketball game to the right, but I can't go to the government meeting to the left. So was I trespassed or not trespassed? I wasn't trespassed. There's no crime. You have to have committed a crime to be trespassed from, from public property. I have got to have done harm to somebody, violated some 14th Amendment Or property. Or okay, well, yeah. let's, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The building, the school, is what? Public is it property. privately owned or is it owned by the people? It's public. It's public, it's public building financed by the people through taxation. So how can they tell one man or two men or whoever you're not allowed to come on that property. They didn't legally trespass me because there's no crime. The police, so you would have, somebody would have had to report a crime to the chief of police that was in the room that night and report a crime to him, uh, you know, and say, I'm the reporter. Let me sign this under the perjury of law uh, or under the penalty of perjury, or I'm a witness. Let me sign this witness statement under perjury and penalty of law. Well, they didn't do any of those because I said, hey, guys, can I have a copy of the witness uh, reporter and the oath that they took that this is true? And how about the reporter? Because if it was true, the police officer would have said, huh, I need a police. I, I need a, an affidavit of probable cause now to give that to the DA. Let's get this guy in front of a judge, get him prosecuted for his foul. I committed no foul, no crime, no harm, no debt. I did nothing wrong to no person, no man, no woman, no entity. I was doing what I was supposed to do as one of the people and redress my government grievances. So anyhow, they do that to me. I'm yielding to them, letting them make all these mistakes because it's just evidence for me. So the, I asked the police officers, can you give me that? They didn't have record of it. They didn't have record of it. There's no record of it. I've given them three contracts now basically saying, if I didn't do this, you have to tell them, if I did something, tell me here now in this contract, if not, I did nothing and you were in fact harming me. And I did it three times. Those contracts are closed. Those contacts, those contracts are now closed. They were unrebutted, which means they didn't disagree with them because there's literally one of the bottom a paragraph said, hey, if you don't rebut this or um, have a, a, an opposite opinion that there's facts or evidence wrong and you don't respond back, you are acquiescing that everything I say here is true and accurate. And that's what and, you and, send. You send them. You send them something, and you say, "Do you, you, know, do you send that certified, or how does I, that work?" I send it registered, registered or with the constable. I okay. send. It, I like to send it with a constable so that we get to wake them up early in the morning and yeah. late at night. Yeah. So, but I'm, you say, in, but in that, in that, what you deliver, you mm -hmm. say, if you do not respond within X amount of time, you are base. You, you you're not basically. You are agreeing to what I'm it's saying. Yeah, that, true. That's it's, law. It's a maximum of law. Here's a secret. The schools are doing that to us. That's how they gain control right. of us because right. they're making rules that no one's paying attention to because only two people go on the school board. They can say whatever the hell they want and they gave you all a chance and because you weren't there to say, no, no, no. Now you can work backwards and they do it, some of this. It's also the banks are doing it. The the governments of all levels doing it to you. The a law firm's doing it to you. They enter, they send you a notice and you don't realize it, and then you just say, oh, yeah, whatever, and you throw it in the trash. And as soon as you do that, uh, 21 days, 40 days, whatever they allotted, now that becomes a contract. And to give you a perfect example of this is in your credit card, okay? When the bank changes the terms of the credit card. Well, when you first enlisted with their services, you entered into a contract with them, and maybe the interest rate was one point. Uh, 1.5% or 5%. And now they want to up it to 18%. All right. Well, if you say no to that, they have to keep you at the 1.5% interest rate. They can't take you to the 18% because you're bound in the original contract. But if you don't challenge them in that notice, 
and you throw it in the trash, 21 days later, it goes into law. And now you're bound by the 18% interest rate. That's Holy just a quick shit. So now yeah. I have contracts with them, right? I have ver- I literally have verifiable evidence that I've committed no debt, harm, wrong, or trespass against any man or woman in up there in whatever they're saying. So then I give them more holy hell about the $76 million. So I'm working on that. My son is getting pictures taken with the Marine Corps. So I go there. Mrs. E- Mrs. Egan takes my vest, holds it for me. She's the right to know officer. She holds my vest so I can go onto the school. Pro- you know, we're in the school property. What does your vest have to do with anything? Well, with we're getting picture. You get, well, oh. you have to, it, it, so I want to take my vest off because I, I had the Marine Corps shirt on for yeah. my son. You know, it was the, it was a Marine Corps signing photo. It's a proud day. Yes, sir. So then I, uh, so I'm there doing this. Mrs. Egan offered to hold it. I gave it to her. So the next day I said, Mrs. Egan, I'd like to get it, come in and view these records. Oh, you can't, you're banned from the property. I'm like, Mrs. Egan, I was just there yesterday. You know, I was just on your property yesterday. So are you banning me from, uh, from doing my oversight? Yeah. You need to rephrase that. I was just on your property. No, I was on the property. Yeah. So, um, so anyhow, so I'm like, okay, Man, so Dave's going to kick your ass. I <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I, I immediately send the right Verbiage to know. is everything. <laughs> I send a, send a right to know him and I asked for it. I, they denied me because I said I'm banned. Well, that's slander. Cause it's cause I'm not, I, I have agreeings that, so she's, she's, I'm not doing hers yet. Be ready, Mrs. Egan. But I have not, cause it's hard to do it. You have to take care of your own affairs. And that's why some people say bullshit. I'll stay one of the King's people. It's too easy. You know, not remember who fought the Revolutionary War and who supported it. Only 10%. 90% of the people are perfectly fine being under the king's bench or the king's rule. So anyhow, so they won't let me do these things. Clearly, they're violating my my God-given rights, okay? My natural rights. So they're getting mad because I'm calling them out. You'll let me go here, but you won't let me go here. And, and I'm even getting them in trouble with the right to know office because they don't know what to do because they're like, shit, the guy does deserve it. And there's no proof that he did anything wrong. Why are you not giving it to him? So instead of doing that, they just deny me because it's a statutory right to know request. So they control that. So they just do a bunch of mumbo jumbo that I'm a legal idiot in. And I say, okay, and I acquiesced. Right. So, now, but they're still pissed at me because I'm still I'm still asking them, where's the money? Give me all of the accounts that that whether they're public or not, I want all the account that has our money in it. I want to see it. It's not coming. So then I went to pick my daughter up at lunchtime, right? So their their directives and terms even say things that they're involved in. Well, my my daughter's involved in school and she needs to get picked up to go get a uh, checking account opened up at lunch and then bring her back. So I pulled into the parking lot. I get out of my car. You have to go to the vestibule to check your student out, right? Check your daughter out or son or whatever. And I leave. Two days later, I get this, I get this new trespasser banning letter from, uh, from the school. Mr. Juhas, we noticed that you entered the school grounds on April 14th, exited your vehicle, and went into the vestibule. That's against our terms and conditions. Your trespass for a year. So they extended it for a year. They never said what I did. When did this happen? On the 14th of April. (laughs) So I'm like, so right away, I'm like, I don't agree. But they let you on. Right. Other times. They got a double standard going here. So I, so, so I, I, so I, and you already told them that this trespass doesn't apply. You already sent them all the paperwork. Once once they violated their own trespass agreement, it's null and void. Oh, this is great. So now I... That's law, by the way. Yeah. So now I send them... It's called precedent, Dave. That's right. (laughs) So now... (laughs) Nice job. (laughs) The student is now the teacher. (laughs) We're done here. We're done here. (laughs) Thanks for coming. Now we know everything. Thanks. All right. Keep going. So so now, because I've been under his... um, Tutelage. tutelage, yeah. I have, in fact, not only our tutelage. Our tutelage. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I have not only returned that letter and rescinded it within seventy-two hours because it's not lawful. They can't lawfully gain control of of me, the man, unless I've harmed somebody, and then they have to get, if you would, a lawful order and, and a probable cause affidavit, and a warrant, basically, to gain control of me. If not, they got to try and gain control of me with a contract. I rescind it. No, thank you. Not only did I send them the rescission, but because I'm faster, I sent them their first notice of harm against me. So the first contract landed with the rescission letter and the constable. So then 72 hours do it again and again. Now I got all three in because I'm in a hurry. Why am I in a hurry? My son's getting ready to graduate. Mm-hmm. 
So I don't want them interfering with my gra- my son's graduation because it's a little bit insulting what they're doing. So I did all my work. I now get wise and I include the sheriff into my notices. Now, why do I add the sheriff into my notice? He didn't harm me. He works down the, the courthouse and the school's way up here. Yeah, he did. So the minute that he reads it, the minute that he reads my notice, he is seeing a crime. He's witnessing crime on paper. Just like if if I punch you in the face and you and me are the only two in this room, you have to file a report and a cop has to come do an investigation, invest the crime, you know? So when he sees us, he has to make this right. That's his job, right? He's, he's, he's supposed to not let anybody harm me. So I have him listed on the claim. He doesn't do anything in the first one. He doesn't do anything in the second one. He doesn't do anything in the third one. So they're all listed, Okay. So now I'm getting ready to go to my son's graduation ceremony from the trade school portion of it, right? Mm -hmm. It's an event. They're having a meal and he's got this car that he built about this big made out of wood, a Model T4. Great stuff, right? And my son is is a great kid. He's getting ready to go to the Marine Corps in a couple of months and I'll be damned if I want to miss any of this stuff because of their nonsense, right? Because you were a Marine too. That's right. He'll be fourth generation Marine. That's awesome. So I wound up giving this, um, I give them all the proper notice to do my part as one of the people to give fair warning and notice to leave me alone. I shouldn't have to give fair warning and notice to leave me alone. I know that sounds ugly, but why would you give somebody notice and warning? Because it's fair. Hey, I'm about to punch you in the face. That's fair. Yeah. You know, so I'm giving them fair warning and notice and I don't want my police officers to make an error. So I literally go down in person to each of of the three agencies, the guys. You know as well as I do, something's holding this up. But if you cannot produce a crime for me that initially created this, then this didn't happen, and you guys have no authority over me. So please be very careful, and I just don't want any of you, make a supervisor come down, make the school board members remove me. Don't be the ones doing it, because there are people in my county and in my state that need to be policed, okay? And I'm, I'm very aware of it. So don't think anything we're doing makes us a lawless society. It actually makes us a lawful society. It's in our school uh, policy. What's legal can't be lawful and what's lawful can't be legal. I love that it's in there. It's probably going to be gone now that I said it. Mm-hmm. But... Um, <laughs> But it's a beautiful thing. George is screwing it up for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tongue can't accuse to be great till George came. <laughs> now we can't have any fun. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> oh, shuck. So we go. So we go in. I, I happen to bring my six contracts I have with them now. I have six because I have two separate claims. Six contracts, one, two, three notices that say to all of them, I have committed no harm, no debt, no fu- no crime, no no wrong, no trespass on anybody. They all agreed to it because they didn't say, because a good affirmation, if they respond, they're either, they're either committing, um, I'm sorry, they're either uh, lying, perjuring themselves because you have all the fact, you don't write unless you have all the facts and evidence. Yeah. No embellishment, no adjectives or adjectives. You're not like, and then you made me feel, and then my dog cried. No, no feelings, no soft feelings, no. You may, there's three ways it can go and they're all good for you when you're honest and you're in honor. So, if they respond, they're lying or telling the truth, which is good for you. They don't respond. So they can lie. They can tell the truth or not respond. All three of those are good for you when you work in fact and evidence. And so if right now I have no one responding because, and they, they have, they have a stat, they have attorneys. They should know better. They can't respond because they can't. They, yeah, they, have they won't. Con- the government officials have been committing treason since at least 1933 and they are not going to uh escalate the treason by committing perjury now what when we think of treason we think it is is the highest of crimes the, it is the highest crimes. okay so so why would they it seems like the the when when they made the the bill of rights and the declaration of independence that that would Anything that would fall under treason should everyone should know you don't right. do that. Article three of the Constitution states Article three, uh, section three, or clause three states that if you commit treason upon the land, that you're the penalty's death. Okay, it's also reenumerated in the Fourteenth uh, Amendment, and under the Fourteenth Amendment, not only are they uh, charged with treason, but we have the right to take their pensions and their salaries. 
It's right in the 14th Amendment for violation of treason. So, but treason would be natural law. No, any time that they violate the Constitution, see, they're committing treason to the Constitution, not to the people. When they violate okay, the okay. Constitution, that's the rule book. Remember, <laughs> they took an oath. I will protect and, uphold. protect and uphold and support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The Constitution binds them. Yeah, it binds them. Bind us. So now they're under contract with the Constitution. And when they fail to perform their duties under the law of the Constitution, they have committed treason upon the people. Wow. So it, it can get deep. So- I'm there with my son, my wife, and and we're having a meal. I brought the contracts with me in case, because I couldn't possibly talk to every police officer. I did the best I can. I did my job. There's evidence. This is you're having a meal when your son was graduating from yep. the so, Votech? Mm-hmm. Okay. From, from the, it's, we, have a, we have a career technical institute. It's yep. kind of like Votech, but yep. it's built right into us. Very good program. It's literally the best program in Tunkhannock for Tunkhannock. Everybody else. Are Considering below, how small Tunkhannock you get. <laughs> everything else outrageous. is below <laughs> national standards, everything in that school. But yet we're paying almost $30,000 per student. Unlike You're per, paying 30 Gs what? per student up yeah, there? Yep. And they just raised taxes unlawfully again yesterday. But that's what I was redressing them with a year ago. Yeah, and we haven't even got the issue of the ESER funding that Biden was pumping into the schools during the pandemic. That okay. money's not accounted for either. Let's, let's put a pin in that. <laughs> so John, John, John Burke, the, the treasurer had to report to this, to the um, state, what their, what the monies were. Right. So back then when you report, it was like 25 to $28,000. It's their numbers. Okay. Which are probably lowered to make it not so hard. I can only imagine some people claim it's higher than that, but what he reported was between 25 and 28 and they just raised taxes again. So who knows where it's at right now? So that day, so now I can tell that something's getting ready to go down because they're all giving me dirty looks because I'm sitting there enjoying, I'm having life, liberty and pursuit of happiness at, graduation. With my son, at my son's vote, uh, uh, ceremony, right? Not graduation, but his vocational. Okay. okay. Like a, it's like a plaque ceremony or whatever. And then sure enough, here comes the an armed uh, subcontractor for the school. And that's important to know. I, I am making it very clear. They're not just SROs or they're not just police officers. They're armed individuals who are subcontracted to the county or to the borough or to the school district. Comes over, tells me he wants me to go in the hallway to talk to the police officer because, you know, I'm trespassing. I said, I'm not trespassing. I can't move. I'm here. Leave me alone. I have the right to be here. You're interfering with my life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, keeping it pretty simple, expressing. If you don't express it, it doesn't exist. So I'm being very clear what they're about to do. You know, not just bothering me because I got mashed potatoes in front of them and I love them. They're, they're, they're interfering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, in all fairness, mashed potatoes it is too, one of the it. greatest forms of potato. I'm being very clear what <laughs> yeah. you're about to do to me. I'm trying to save their asses because, in fact, I love every one of my law enforcement officers. I know what they're doing is wrong. Some of them know they're doing wrong. Some of them don't understand what's going on. And I plan on the rest of my life teaching them, consult, because it tells us to consult and instruct them. And I'll be the first one to tell you there are people that need to be policed you know, in our society. And that's what you have them for. So the police officer comes up to me uh, because I wouldn't leave with the SRO guy. And he's like, you got to go. You're being tre- defiantly trespassed. I said, I can't be defiantly trespassed if I was never trespassed. I can't be trespassed unless I broke a crime. You know, I've never committed a crime. You, you have no evidence of it. I have six contracts that I've shared with the, your departments that they have agreed. I have committed no harm, no crime. I never agreed to their terms and conditions. So therefore, you're about to make a bad determination. You got to go. Let's go. I said, listen, if I stand up and I, he goes, you're about to make a scene. I said, no, I'm not going to make a scene. You're making a scene by me sitting here. I'm in honor. You're in dishonor. If I rise with you, I become in dishonor because I'm agreeing with you that consenting that something has gone wrong with me. And now I'm giving lawful authority to you to take me out of here. I do not. The only way I'm leaving is if you grab me and forcefully pick me up. Because it has to be that way in order for me to stay in honor. I can't have it any other way. You know, the minute you touch me, I will leave with you peacefully. But this has got to be by force because I cannot consent to you because I will literally be in dishonor. And I, it will literally affect the outcome of this. So he took out his handcuffs, put his hand down, he pulled on my arm. I rose up 
and in peace and honor, because that's the craziest thing. This has to all be done in peace and honor, right? And it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war, right? So I, I, I don't give them any reason. Even when they send me hate mail and threatening letters, I still am super calm, you know? So he pulls me out of there and I walk out with him. He's like, I leave the property. He's going to arraign me in the morning or whatever. He, he considers me arrested, right? But he's not going to make me go to jail, whatever. So I said, well, this is your last. And I, I, you're always supposed to give them a chance. You're supposed to look the man in the face, Matthew 18, 15 through 20, which is really good to work out of. Even if you don't believe in the Bible, that's the law. So you, if you start there and read some of it, you'll see you're supposed to look the man in the face and said, you done, you harmed me. Could you, can you offer a remedy? And you look for a remedy and they give them a chance right there. Cause you, you see your brother face to face one-on-one -on -one and ask him for a remedy. If he doesn't provide a remedy, now you bring two or three, right? Cause now you need witnesses and that's usually registered mail constable, a uh, group of people. So the police officer is like, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, well, actually it was a private meeting. So I won't tell you what happened, but just know I had to give a notice, right? Cause a private meeting is meant to be private. So I'll leave it there. So I'm sure I just shocked him with my courtesy and my honor of giving him an opportunity just to, you know, could you give him a chance to say, hey, I just screwed up. I'm sorry. You're free. He could have That's done That's the that. world we live in where courtesy and honor is shocking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, appalled. So, um, so then I, I walked off the she property. idiot help that woman? Yeah. What a novel concept. <laughs> oh, my God. So I walked off the property, was able to clear my head a little bit, you know, and then oh, I'm thinking, man, his graduation's in a week. So now I have to rush out a bunch of new notices because I want people to stop interfering with me. I've yeah. done, I've committed as a 14th Amendment citizen, I've done nothing wrong and I'm not that. So I've done, I've, I've committed no harm, no trespass, none of thing. So I started my letter process. I added the supervisors of my county or the, of the township who are in charge of these police. So I met with one man in private and he was very receptive. He's like, oh, we got to put a stop to this. I'm like, look, I just want to let know I'm going to notice you too. So before I do, this is your opportunity to make remedy to me as a man. By giving them notice, essentially, it is what that... Uh what that does is it then makes them also responsible for holding these other elected officials. They're seeing crime. Okay. And those who, who do nothing are committing right. the crime. They, they have to, uh, when they, when, uh, um, that's called accessory to a crime, Dave. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Again, what a week. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, uh, so then I, I that's what it becomes. That's what it becomes. I mean, it's what it is essentially, right. I guess. So. so I felt like I was going to get a pretty good uh, help from, from the supervisor. And um, it appeared not to work out because I wasn't getting any response. You know, okay, so now it's the, it's the night of my, uh, oh, and then I get, I finally get some understanding that I have some type of a hearing in Tunkhannock. Well, that's news to me. Nothing came in my mail. So... It's in the new, two newspapers. I'm like, well, okay, that's good. There's a little slander and defamation, defamation libel for me. Wait, the newspaper said you have a hearing before you knew you had yep. a hearing. Yep. So um, I go in. So I go not, in. Not only that, but they slandered him, and they uh, created a bias of the general population against him. What did oh. they say? That's what that's what the government and the and the newspapers do. They work in. I know how it feels. Even if even if you just even if it was just defying trespassing, he's arraigned on the twenty second. It's still, still defamation. He didn't say that dirty bastard came in. It was nothing. They were just, they were just wrong. They didn't do any investigative journalism. So they were mocking fraud. They didn't, they didn't come and interview him and, and get his point of view. So they didn't just put a notice in the paper that there was a, a court date. No, they, they wrote an article no, about no, no, it. No, no, even just, uh, it's harm is harm. Whether yeah. they embellish it in a 15 page <clears throat> article yeah. or they just did that. They didn't do any investigative journalism. That's my family's name is people are not going to, it, that doesn't get undone. You know what they do in the court of public opinion. They yeah. can crush people over that, you know? So just to make you feel not so bad, uh, our local newspaper has called me an anti-vax COVID skeptic, January 6th apologist. <laughs> Lots of embellishing there. Huh? Yeah. That's, that's verbatim. That's, that's what they wrote. Nice. We Where? read that article live uh, a couple Where? podcasts ago Where? and it was yeah. a blast. Where? <laughs> Where are they wrong? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so they're not. Yeah. 
But the problem is, is something like that has a stigma that's carried with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The stigma that's carried with it. And you, under common law, which we haven't even gotten into, common law to I, the I being your law, you can bring claim against them for that, against the editor, the the guy that wrote the article, and uh, the publicist. Let's get wild. This seems seems like a really interesting idea for a mini documentary. So this, so I'm... Getting ready to go to my want to go to my son's graduation. Dave, we need to talk more after this. All right, All right. I I'm do up. I do not want to ruin my son's night, so I will ruin my life knowing that I can't attend my son's graduation. So <laughs> I go to my friend's house. That's clear. That's near, so I can at least hear his name called. And I oh, am how insane. I am in contact with now the the only person that ever called me from a claim or notice was the one chief of police saying, "Hey." The field where the graduation is going to be is not in my jurisdiction, so leave me alone. So he dimed out his buddy and said, you know, the chief of that town is going to be in jurisdiction, so you need to talk to him. Well, they all are part of this fraud. From fraud, everything dies. So none of this should be happening because there was never an original anything. I there was you, never an original trespass. There yeah, was never original not, anything. Yeah, but see, they can't let this happen because they can't allow the chattel to be aware that they can walk out of the pin, that they're in this corral controlled by the powers to be being the government and the gates wide open. Now my, and he's showing them the way out of, through the gate. They can't I, have that. I think um, I agree with you. I think, I think first of all, um, people don't know what their rights are. They don't. They, they have don't no have idea. a clue. Mm-hmm. Um, second of all, and and to maybe to play board, that, that's board, orchestrated by the way. It it seems that way. Mm-hmm. Um, the second thing is is as far as like if the people don't know what their rights are, then the the governments, i.e., school boards, local municipal, they don't know what your if they don't know what their rights are, then they don't know what your rights are. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So this is why well, like, this rights, is such a big problem. I need right. to be successful. Whatever that means. I, I, successful to me is just making contact because I don't know what success looks like and I don't care. Like I can't tell you I want to win or lose anything. I just got to keep going. That's all I got to do because if, if you are an honor, I'll show you later how being an honor helps. So my graduation night comes, the one chief of police, I called them. I said, hey, it's a couple minutes before graduation. What's the census? Did they put a stay on this not on this stupidity? He goes, no, they didn't. He goes, I'm in, I'm in plain clothes. So if you come, I'm going to be the one, you know, removing you. So he's just trying to say he's not going to make a big scene with this SWAT team outfit. Right, on, you know? right. Well, I said, I'm going to tell you what I said. I, I know you don't know what you're doing, you know, and I'm sorry for what you're doing. I said that minimum, go hug my son. Take a minute. You, you go hug my son. You shake his hand. Tell him his father loves him. What's it? Are a lot of parents going through this? Yeah, all across the United States. In some school boards, they have sick the FBI on them, which is a total fraud because the FBI's jurisdiction ends at uh, at the uh, federal building. When they step on the sidewalk, they have no immunity. Nineteen enumerated rights. The federal government has nineteen enumerated rights. The 17th enumeration says that their power ends at the District of Columbia or one of their go- uh, their government buildings, okay, like Armory or whatever the case may be, okay? And when they step out onto the sidewalk, they have no immunity. Mm-hmm. So when a FBI agent shows up at your house and says, hey, uh, we got this report from the school board that you uh, caused a nuisance, they have no jurisdiction to be there, let alone knock on your door. You just say, oh, you're what? You're who? Little far from home, close the door. It's that simple. It's so wild because like you were saying, like I think there's so many people that don't understand their rights, but like it's like the new thing now is everybody loves to complain and protest about all these things. It's like just the most basic fundamental rights that we have as human beings are being va- violated. Mm-hmm. Right. On a daily basis, right? We're being we're being inundated, uh, minute by minute. Our it's judges like, are committing fraud yeah. and committing 
treason every minute of the day that they're they're on the bench. It's 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 wild because I see so many people going back and forth in this whole idea of right versus left, liberal versus conservative, and all it is is just people arguing right. over which slave master they want to live on. Right. That's right. There, it's it's dissension. It's diversion. Yeah. They're trying to create diversion. What we all need to be doing as a people, and I hope your all your listeners hear this. We need to come together. We need to put our differences aside and we need to come together as a, as a unit and, and go and take back our Republic as our founding fathers gave us. Mm-hmm. All the tools are there. All the laws are there. All we have to do is enforce them. We don't have to take up arms. We don't have to do any of that. We can, through the power of the pen, through common law, we can take back what is rightfully ours. Well, and so it, you know why that's probably cold? not happening? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Because okay. people are lazy. Yeah. <clears throat> so, well, no, no. There, it, this has been orchestrated. Yeah. The Rockefellers, the Lehman, the Rothschilds, they have created, I mean, in the 50s, 40s, 50s, moms lived at home. You know, dad went mm-hmm. to work, mom stayed home, took care of the children, took care of the house. Then what happened in the 60s? Mom went to work. And then it just got progressively worse. Now we got moms working two jobs, dads working two jobs, or there is no dad at home and mom's working two jobs, trying to support the the children, the dad somewhere else. And that's all created through the society Mm -hmm. to, to disenfranchise the family. I want to jump back in. Apologize for that. It's okay. Can I, I, can you call that? Can I ask him one quick question? I'm sorry. When you, so it was like, what'd you say? It was like 1983 when you were, uh, the income. Yeah. I, that's when you first this, started. No, no, I started in 89. That's 89. I, okay. Yeah. So when you started looking into this stuff mm-hmm. and it seems to me, I don't know, I don't know what you were as a young man. Um, did you start go, like to me, oh, the last three years has been a, 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 a like a never ending series of really, <laughs> really? Right. Yeah. yeah the, the greatest thing that has happened to this country is what has happened in the last three years. That I am so elated because when I started my journey in 89, I was by myself. Mm-hmm. There was nobody. And when I would bring this topic up and start talking to people, they'd oh, go- crazy Dave. They'd go- <laughs> Yeah, and listen, because of this podcast, <clears throat> thir- 13 more people are going to know. <laughs> if you'd like to sponsor our show. <laughs> but I mean, were you, did it, did it like, so to me, it led me to a lot of like, what, what mm-hmm. is, what is real? Right. Like it right. opened up a lot of questions well, for me. The, the illusion. I mean, I, I got 35 years of weeding through the illusions and trying to figure out what was real, what wasn't real. You guys are getting a cram course. Yeah. I mean, you guys are getting this stuff crammed down your throat right now. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I got a slow drip uh, and we had to keep our heads down because 30 years ago, the government would hunt us down. They literally would come and hunt us down if they knew what we were doing what we were thinking they would come and uh, under the Bush administration and then under under uh, under the Obama administration, yeah, it was evil. It was it was bad you because could, you were considered evil. Well, in the corporate in the corporation, okay, we are considered terrorists to the corporation. Even though the the Declaration of Independence says we have the right, it's not sedition. We have the right to abolish a, a destructive government. And yet the uh, corporate government, the U.S. Inc., sees us as terrorists and, and goes to war against us. Matter of fact, that's what it's all about. Under the, uh, 1933, they passed the Emergency Banking Relief Act, which took all our money and gave it to the international bankers. In 39, they passed the, uh, uh, Wars Par Act, the War Par Act, okay? Trading with the Enemy Act. That's what they passed in 39. And it was modified from 1917. 1917, it was to restrict the, uh, to restrict the, uh, like Ford Motor Company from selling uh, vehicles to the Germans during the First World War. All right. Well, then they modified it. <laughs> well, wouldn't that be profiteering? That would be war Right. That was 
profiteering, but yeah. they're still profiteering today. It's illegal, but they're still right. doing it. Yeah. So then in 1939, they modified it and made all of us enemies of the state. And we are all combatants, enemies, rebels, and, and, uh, and malcontents of the, of the state. Last time I was here, okay. we, we drank out of baby monkey skulls, and now it's paper cups. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have baby this, monkey skulls? This show's gone really lowbrow lately. <laughs> <laughs> we got them from the CDC. There was a truck that tripped, uh, flipped over on 80 <laughs> they had a, a couple of years ago. Oh, remember yeah. that? Yeah. I sold them on eBay so, to help keep the lights on. So when they did that, <coughs> and that's what the courts are doing. When you enter the court for a traffic infraction or child protection services or whatever, tax evasion or foreclosure on your property they see you as as a enemy combatant a uh prisoner of war of the united states of america take it easy ink that's hard stuff right so where did so uh, let me just ask you because you're 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 the elder red pill (laughs) 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 um what was it like going, I mean, you were on your own. I mean, I yeah. had I, I had a bunch of people and, it, and it's not like, you know, I mean, look, no matter what anybody wants to say about any of our opinions, like the government's saying that there's aliens. So as far as I'm concerned, anything is possible and anything is possible. Well, there is aliens. I, that's where I'm. <laughs> we got a whole bunch of them come across the border. Uh, <laughs> all right. You're good with that. Give me a chance. So, to get caught back so but did you go, was, was it, uh, was it tough for you? To come to like these realizations where it's no, like a lot it, of the things. What I'm it was, out. okay, what it was is I got fucking pissed off in a major way. Okay. And I wanted to go to war uh-huh. because the I realized that our our way of life was stolen from us. You got to understand, they are stealing our wealth. They are stealing our inheritance. The inheritance from your father, your grandfather, your great grandfather, they stole that and from gonna, us right now. I got to get a jump in here because I got I can help this because I had this happen to me. So <clears throat> I just want to let you know the, the police officer that did that was an honorable man who's stuck in a system that's being told to do this thing. And I feel bad for him because he, in fact, has a family and stuff. Um you know, he did what I asked him to do. To me, he's an honorable man, and that will reflect on my claim against him. Mm-hmm. You know, because if it's you guys, you're getting a claim against me. People don't understand. There was one woman in Wyoming County that finally gave me remedy because I gave her a one to one. I give at least seventy opportunities for people to give me a remedy in either a personal notice or a, a post notice. I had one lady finally give me remedy. You know how much money she gave me? Mm. An apology. Because if they apologize, you have the right to forgive those who trespass against you. And she literally might have saved the county because I don't think that all the knuckleheads don't know what I'm asking for. Because I ask for remedy. I don't say, give me a thousand bucks and we'll call it even. I said, give me an offer of a remedy. You, you, you owe me a remedy. You harm me. Give me a remedy. And they, some of them are going to be like, well, if we apologize, we're going to admit we're wrong. Well, you, yeah, you're wrong because you're not responding. So at minimum, no, you're wrong because you harmed that's me. That's right. And you're proving it by not, you're making this more evidence. You're escalating. You're escalating. So at minimum, offer me apology. If you punch me five times in five different days, you're probably, an apology might not work. I probably want something more. You know, if someone says, hey, I, we don't have 1.95 million to give you. What do you got? I got a thousand bucks. I'll tell you what, you keep the thousand bucks. I'll take your bonds instead. Well, no, I don't want to give you my bonds. I can't be a public official. Then I'll take the one point nine five million. Because when they make, you know, that, but maybe an apology. Some of these people aren't bad. I know they're being stuck by. They're their, in a system. Yeah, and they're being told what to do by their solicitor, and but they are becoming complicit. So then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, but they're, they're, they're okay. They still has the right. They're a, they're a man. They're of of mankind. They have the right to pick a book up. And do and research. They have the right to open he's a book me, up and look. Telling me don't be so what, nice. That's what he just. Yeah. Said. Well, I mean, I mean he's look, and he's right but, because but, I'm I'm prepared because what they did to me and my son because my son and when I went to the Marine Corps, my mother didn't see me for two years and nine months because I was a constant tour, you know. So I know that I I am not gonna. I, this was important to me. This was not minor, but I also, you know, they did this, not me. They created this scenario. So it in its own right is its own claim. 
every time they harm me, it's an individual claim. It's not one big one. I have 20 in the queue. Is that what you say? It? Uh, if you say so, yeah, I'm with you. Well, the queue, is that something <laughs> yeah. you stand by? Yeah. Yep. I got, tw- I got 20 in the queue and, and, and it's, it's out of, it's out of control. So once I get out of there, I finally start understanding that there's actually a court date hanging out someplace for me. So I want to start. Now, what was the court date for? Well, specifically? I, I really didn't know. I had to go investigate it at the courthouse, viewed it there, and it's going to be for defiant trespassing. Which right? means they didn't provide proper service. But their court being a Bargill corrupt court, they're still going to move forward and process him as if he hadn't. Uh, that he was properly served and he violated. So they're going to, they're going to hold him in contempt of court for failure to appear. I don't go anywhere without witnesses. And that's corruption. Common law says witnesses and basically record too. So you can have perfect transcription for everybody. I go there. I said, uh, do I have a court date coming up on the 22nd? Well, yeah, it's right here. And she shows me the envelope that got returned to her. And I'm like, well, can you mail that to me so I can have that? Well, I can give it to you right here. I said, no, no, I'd like for you to properly serve me. You know, she gave it to me. I looked at it. I understand what it is. And I'm like, you know, take this back. I don't want any perceived uh, contracts. Mail that to me or you know, post that to me, mail it to me, whatever they do. Get that to me. This is this is irresponsible. <clears throat> this is interference on your part. The post office clearly showed them that they're sending it to the wrong address. So they restamped it. You understand? To send it to the same wrong send, address no, again. No, no, no. To send it to the right address. They're just not sending it. Oh. Right? So that's real trouble for me that they did that. There's a reason for that. But I still prepared myself for this a little bit, and I started putting stuff into the docket. And the clerk of court, the lady, the, the woman who, does, who acts like clerk of court, wouldn't take my documents. But good thing I had the witnesses, because when I served it to her, I walked away, just like they do like in the constable world. So she has it under witness, and I hope it's in there because these people need to know I have stuff to enter into this docket to literally help dismiss this before. Don't waste people's money, but here's what they want. So this is this is where it all comes down to. You want to know if we're chattel? Oh, yeah. So I'm probably only going to be able to show. I don't know how to do this with the viewers. They'll have to trust me. Put maybe. your hand underneath your jaw. Maybe you sh- you aim it this way. So if oh, you, you aim it, if you aim it this way, you'll be we'll fine. We'll give it a try. And if, I, if it's not well done, then I'll, I apologize. But. So after I had a I had another court hearing um, in uh, Strasbourg for the same thing trust defying trespassing. So this is an effort. This is going to be an effort to. This is how they're going to silence parents. Anybody who's making sense, just trespass them. You know, ban them. Get them in the contract because they didn't trespass me. They banned me. <coughs> they told me don't trespass. Everybody knows you're not supposed to trespass. So I wasn't trespassing. So they actually disguised their banning letter. As a trespass, there's no official trespass, period. I've committed no harm. I've, I've entered into no contracts. So I went to Strasbourg, and I didn't dare go to Strasbourg alone. And since I already had a discussion with Carl Smith that I will be recording in his courtroom, which he was okay with, and then I sent my sheriffs up there to verify that because I don't want a sheriff's touching me and making errors because I like them because I know we need them. I understand the system they're in, but I think if we can consult and instruct our public officials, they can actually take good care of the people and the 14th Amendment citizens and the employees to the, to the, to the government. So to the deputy sheriff and the sheriff went down and in fact confirmed that the, that the judge was okay with me recording, which because it was my right, he said, and that's right. But if you looked at the sticker on the door, it said, don't come in your recording devices. Well, what the hell? Yeah. That's how they get you. Now, um, so I went to Strasbourg under the same conditions that I'm recording. In that there. was yesterday, right? Yeah, that was yesterday. So I'm going in there and I'm recording. And the judge initially wanted to make sure everybody it was just me recording because it could get clumsy, right? Because people be going, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. it could get clumsy. And it was really tight. It was probably three times the size of this room. And I wanted witnesses because they don't want it to be a court of record. That's the problem. Because in these lower courts, a bunch of garbage comes out, lies and mis- malfeasance and misprison. Yeah, we, we proved several times <laughs> that they had lied and distorted the truth and embellished. And I offered, I so every time something went wrong, I motioned to dismiss, dismiss. this. I said, yeah. I want us all to be able to leave here in honor. The further we go, the further in dishonor you become. I'm the only one here in honor. And truly, because I was in honor, I didn't know what was about to happen. I thought I was going to be able to stay in my jurisdiction as common law. Well, she railroaded me right into her jurisdiction and wasn't going to hear it. And she started the proceeding, if you would, in her admiralty court. 
Now, I, what am I going to do? There's guards in there. I have to go do this thing somehow. But I tried to maintain, I did maintain my own jurisdiction where I never uh, agreed as a corporation because I'm a corporation when I'm there. Because remember, paper can only attack paper. So it says on this court hearing, Pennsylvania versus George Andrew Juhas, all caps, right? Uh, so they're basically, paper has to attack paper. They're not attacking me as the man, but they need me there as the agent to make some signatures and thumbprints or whatever so they can actually pull the money out of my account. Who here agrees that there's an account? So do you, do you, you guys, know what he's talking about? Do you guys, the SESTICU trust or the social security trust, do you guys know okay. it's real? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know? No, I don't. Please so, explain. okay, tell him while I pee. All right, you <laughs> tell them about these trusts and I'm, okay. I'm going to show them the proof when he when comes back. When uh, you're created, when you are, when you, uh, bo are born, uh, that there's a three to five day process while you're in the hospital with your mother that they... Uh, uh, go to your mother and she becomes a witness to your birth. And that's a birth like birthing a ship. All right. And the doctor becomes the dock of receiving of the vessel. You're the vessel. And you come into the port, into the dock, and there's a bill of lading created, which is called a certificate of live birth. And with that certificate of live birth, then they take it to the registrar of the state and he creates a trust. And the trust is called a SESTA KQV trust. This goes all the way back to... Uh, 1666. No, it goes back further than that. It goes back to uh, 1213. Oh, I saw Actually, that. it goes back to 666. I have the, 16, I have the 1666. Yeah, that version. was uh, Great Britain. Okay, sorry. Okay. So the... the um, Vatican, uh, the Pope, in 666, created a uh, Sesta KV trust over the whole world. He, he, gave, he claimed what God gave all men, dominion over earth. The Pope claimed that for himself. And in a Sesta KV trust, claimed that he was the overseer of all property all land, all air, all sea, anything in, on, or above, it was his. And he claimed that. And then from that, they have created sub Sesta KV Trust. And then in 1666, the London burned down due to the plague. And uh, because of the plague, they monetized all the men and women in that, uh, in London so they could get funding to rebuild London. The king did that, okay? Well, then they came to the United States and Andrew Jackson did it again to free us, the people of this country, from the international bankers on the second, um, at the end of the second uh, renewal of the, chartered bank called the American, uh, the, the United, the bank of the United States of America, which is owned by King George. All right. Or the, mo uh, the monarchy. So to not renew the charter of the second bank, which would have been the third ch charter, he put up the people of the United States as collateral, which vanquished the debt, the international debt. And, um, but then uh, later on, our legislators uh, wanted money through greed to pad their pockets, entered back into the fiat system. All right. So then, then we come to 1913 with the creation of the Federal Reserve, which is the third charter bank of the international bankers. So with that, in 1933, they instituted the Social Security Act and they instituted uh which was already in place on uh, 1613, or I'm sorry, correct date, 1913. They instituted the, mon the uh, um, uh, certificate of live birth. And then from that, they create birth certificates. Birth certificates are monetary instruments. They're bonds against the Sesta KV Trust. And everyone in this room are trillionaires. You're all trillionaires. But, you know not, but you, not you, Marky. <laughs> but you all have, have no access to that account. 
that says to K or the Social Security account. You have no access to any of that. It's all controlled by the Federal Reserve, which is owned by the international bankers. That was transferred in, I think, 1946, if I know my history. I think it was right around there. The, it was all transferred to the international bankers through the Mo International Monetary Fund. You guys Fund. did sniffy things last time. Yeah. yeah I heard did. you talk about it, but you didn't do it this time. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I kicked the habit. <laughs> first of all, you're going first, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that? Did you know all that stuff about like certificate of live birth and you were bonded and last time George was on, we uh, I know we skirted it. We we talked about it in a. Anyway, I think we, we talked about it yeah. a little bit after the podcast. I and think this, that's what it was. Something yeah. really cool happened to me when I got my birth certificate, which I didn't have, to get my passport. I've been celebrating my birthday on the twenty on twenty third. My birth certificate says the twenty fifth. So my my certificate of live birth, which my mother's remembers me being born on, was the twenty third of November. So it's a certificate of live birth, blue eyes, baby boy, blah blah blah. The Doctor Who. It's a page and book shows you're alive. Your birth certificate is, in my opinion, a death certificate because it's in all caps. It's it's a corporation. Yeah, you become a decedent. You are literally a, a, a vessel at sea. <laughs> You're, you're a lost vessel at sea. You're a lost vessel in your file folder. You are a corporation that gets Fuck. tucked away to the point it was so tucked away, I didn't have a copy of it. So I had to get a copy. So when I got my passport, my passport, my driver's license don't match. Well, I want to get rid of my driver's license anyhow, because that's how they make you an employee to the, the Department of Motor Vehicle and the municipality you're in. So I want to get rid of it because that's a hook. Because I've, I've had the mask. How do you get rid of it? You just not renew it? No, no, no you, can't. you, you have to rescind, it. revoke it. You have it. to rescind your do signature. Some, people might have done that in the past, and that's how they still get See, hooked. See, uh, the government has to provide 100% transparency of the facts. Mm -hmm. And when, like, you were 16 years old and you went down to get your driver's license, you're all wired up to get your driver's license. They didn't explain to you that if you signed that contract, that you were forfeiting all your rights. You became underneath your functionary. Yeah, you you des descend descended from a man to a driver. That's a title. And when you vanquished your power as a man, you forfeited all the rights that went with it, all your unalienable rights. What he's not going to be able to tell you is no matter what we have done in fraud, you can stand on your square today with your knowledge is and you can re, re, you can re invoke all of right. your common law rights as you stand and speak them, right? And, and then forfeit none of them, right? But you better know how to get it because a good cop or a good whoever is going to keep dragging you into their jurisdiction and still hammer you. So it, I believe it is good to get rid of some of your hooks, you know, because I've had them ask me after school board meeting, you drive here. What do you want to know? What, for? What, what does that have to do with the yeah, subject matter? Because they at want hand? they want to put me beneath them so they can right. so I can be understanding them. You know. So uh, when you when you enter into their contract, the reason it's called unalienable rights is because they're always present. They're always there. All you have to do is express them. As soon as you express them, they are. In place. And because of the constitution, you could contract your rights away. Because like when you get a marijuana card, you're contracting away your second amendment, your fourth, fifth, your 10th. Your, they can come in your house and check you anytime they want. Well, they can, that, once again, you can revoke any of that. That's right. That. But people think this is helpless. You're just you're because not. you're all these things. You are, if you can hear my voice, you are one of the people. Whether you stand up and defend them that's different. If you let other people do the work for you, you still got to come over and enjoy what they're fighting for. Eventually, just like the 90% of the people who did not fight the Revolutionary War, they were okay under the king's bench and under the king's rule because this is just too much freaking work for everybody. And let me tell you, I can tell you that my wife suffers from this because she doesn't- She understand. suffers from George? <laughs> well, she, and, and I know, you know, she'll- No, no, no. And, and, and if I can, look- I, I, I'm nowhere near where both of you gentlemen are, mm -hmm. but you know, it, it, many conversations I have with Mike and Dan and, and, and we have these conversations a lot where it's like, we realize some things that maybe a lot of people don't realize and it. And, and you can't like, I'm, I'm sure you've heard the, you said the term matrix before. 
I hear a lot of people go, once you see the matrix, you can't unsee it. Yeah. There's right. no turning back. I never right. call it like that. I just say, I can't unsee what I see. I and, can't well, hear what that, I hear. And that for the people in your life that love you and you mm. love, it makes their lives incredibly difficult because they're, well, they're you're, people I keep like us as, are operating on a wavelength. Yeah. That I keep it secret at. from a lot of people. Right. Only because to give, like my dad is desperate to pay off his $20,000 on his mortgage because that would be the one of the proudest achievements of his life because we suffered a long time as a low income family five kids and, uh, and 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 two working parents my dad two weeks on the road at a time you know yeah he's a truck driver right yeah so for him to be able to pull this off i i i, I hate to tell him how to do it differently and i don't even want to talk about because it, it can go on for an hour but i gotta let him pay it off on his own he doesn't know that when he bought his house he paid for his house i'll just keep it that simple when you buy yeah. your house you paid for your house yeah at the time when they give you the key and you put the key in the lock for the first time to step into that house you have already paid that house off three times. But you go in a silly contract that you don't understand. And we really don't want to go down that road. Yeah, that's let's it. not right now because it is so but I gotta talk about this. I got to talk about this court All case. All right, so get me, so get me, get so me the court Strasburg case. So Strasburg did the same thing. So there's clearly an effort to use trespass as the way to keep confident, law-abiding people, parents, and citizens from going and doing their business, Okay. So in order to keep in order to keep us out, they're trying to do this trespass thing. So Strasburg is trying it. And I clearly did no harm. I, I was I was mic'd up because of you that night. It was perfect, beautifully done. <laughs> did you just make me an accessory? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get Turn it in. hard. Turn it hard. There you go. So I um so I have the whole thing under mic and these poor fools in and please okay, I gotta take in order to try to stay in, if you would, and I have a hard time because you know, again, better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. The men and women that were in that room were in dishonor. They were disarray and dishonor. I wasn't prepared either. I had no clue what I was walking into. My goal was to stay in common law jurisdiction. And I thought if I assumed and kept common law jurisdiction, she would dismiss it based on that because she can't get to my paper. So she still thinks she could have got to my paper. She pushed it forward. My guess is she actually already got to my paper. She wasn't used to this fight. And she had no choice because I gave her four good reasons to dismiss this. One, he got my name wrong. Not just, I'm not playing a game with a, not, a name, but he used my, he said he used my passport, which was critical. That was so critical. Thank Mr. P that, that, that police officer might have saved, saved some, some hassle for me. I got a lot of hassle to deal with, but he said he used my passport, but he used my driver's license name because what he did was it goes into his patrol car. And he actually pulled up my license based on my passport. And I didn't offer that as my ID because in fact, I was there as a tra I was there as a man, not as a driver. Right. But in order to get me under his jurisdiction, he went in there and even came back and asked me about why is your birthday on the 23rd on one and it's 25 on the other? Well, you and I now know because of this, I was born on the 23rd. It went to the secretary of state and he made a corporation in my name and sent back the bond for my mother to sign so he created a corporation, all caps name, okay, on the 25th. So we've been selling my birthday on the 23rd. My birth certificate says the 25th. The birth certificate is actually my death certificate because it's a, it's an entity. It's a fiction. It's, it's not real, okay? Now, I am, when you're born um, they, and they make this trust, you are the grantor, the trustee, the beneficiary, and the agent. So if they want to charge your account with a crime, a commercial crime to make some money. They in fact need you there to fingerprint, thumbprint and sign away as the agent. I resigned as the agent, gave them notice of that. And they still pushed forward because I believe they already had me bond it before that proceeding already happened. Cause that's, we're like cattle. We were literally like it, you, you go and he, a cow goes down this, this, this uh, head gate and he's getting shots. He's getting his hoofs clean. He's getting his ear tag. You know, it's getting inoculated and branded and you just keep moving them down. Well, that's what this place is. It's truly that. So I gave her four good reasons to dismiss it. Lies um, uh, on evidence that you can't be admissible, like the very affidavit. And you're representing yourself in this I'm situation. I'm not representing myself. You don't represent. I'm, okay, you're there alone I'm, as a man. I'm presenting myself as a man. And I'm there as a third party intervener because when I resigned as the agent, I told them I cannot help you complete this financial transaction. Now, so on its merit, I showed three lies from three different people. And I'm like, 
ma'am, I'm giving you so many opportunities to keep us in honor the best we can and dismiss this. Why are you pushing this forward? I'm thinking, but I know why, because I went home and I found the bond she created. So me as chattel, because in fact, she did threaten me that I would spend, I would basically spend my days in jail waiting for my next court date. There was four things that could have happened. This is for a, this is for a trespass. They, whatever they're doing to me, it's coming to everybody else and their own, and it's quiet. They know, how to, I don't know how to be quiet. So I don't know when to stop. So therefore my shit is if you would vocal, right? Yeah. So there, this is happening to a lot of people and they're just not being vocal. They're just getting attorneys. Attorneys are representing their papers so the paper can attack paper and they get tons of money. All right. And I know that because eventually I whispered to Dave, what do you want me to do? He goes, it's easier to work. This is not our battle to win. She's already made up her mind. She probably has you bonded. Right. So she can't back it out. There'd be like all kinds of financial transactions that have to happen to give money back. So she's just going to push up the upper courts and see what happens there. Get, get, kick the can down the road. So I wound up signing my name to documents that if I didn't sign it, she basically said I was going to go to jail into my hearing. She'd hold me over into the court case. I'm getting, I have trips to go on. So she's affecting me by doing this. So under duress with, you know, my, my proper name as a man, I wrote my name, colon George hyphen you, um, Andrew semicolon dot Uhas colon. That basically says George Andrew. That's my name from the house of Uhas, which proves I'm a living being. I did it in capitus minimus, which is all lowercase. They want you to write it differently. Even all caps in the beginning of your names will represent a trust. All lowercase is capitus minimus. If you're not doing it, start practicing it now. Cause I'm telling you, if that's the first thing you do, then so be it. So anyhow, she basically does that. I go home. I'm, I'm pretty defeated. Um, I didn't. So here's what happened. She could have dismissed it, but she didn't dismiss it. She could have carried it over, which allowed me to defend myself better in the next court because I had no idea that I would be doing cross examinations and stuff. I wasn't prepared for their procedural stuff because it's not my court. So I didn't want to prepare for that. I just wanted to stay in my jurisdiction. Well, I didn't realize they can just railroad you into their jurisdiction. Uh, and then I got to be prepared to talk inside of there. So I, I did as best as I can. But because I was an honor, I didn't have to make up any lies. It was so easy to do. I still screwed up. I'm probably on a score of one to 10. David, what did I score? Maybe a three or two or one? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty I, much. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. But here's the thing. Because I was in honor, because I Apparently stayed. Dave's not either. <laughs> because I stayed in honor, at least I, I wasn't. She could have found me guilty. She had the right to find me guilty. But she right. clearly knew something was up. And she's trying to be the as best she can. But she already screwed up by bonding me is what she did. And she threatened me basically for the bond. Are you going to go to jail until your holdover court date? So, um, this is what I found when I went home and I hope to do a good job. I scratched out. So I want to give full transparency, right? I'm doing the best I can here. Anybody who wants to contact me somehow contact you guys and I will show them everything quickly so they can't memorize my stuff. But this is my information. This is to access my accounts. This is my, my paper, my, my trust. I know how to access them now mm -hmm. to view them. I'm gaining access if you would monetarily too, but I'm not there yet. There's stuff you have to do. You have to get rid of hooks. All right. So you're about to witness, I'll give you my last four. Everybody's got it, but you're going to see a bottom tr uh, bond that was created yesterday, 615 for a, a minimum entry of $1 million. He suspects it's a $6 million bond. So they took $6 million. Yeah, I can explain that. Later. Right, so I'm about to show you something. Where tell me so, how. Hold, hold on, just thing. before we do, yeah. I just want to again clarify. So you're saying when you're born, you have a birth certificate. They create a corporate so, entity so of you. Certificate you need of a live birth. Certificate certificate right. Of birth. I, I'm just trying to get to the. the, the there's a, a a trust created in Correct. your name as a corporation. Correct. Your mom and dad pumps money from their accounts into that to first form. That seeds and it. the so, judge took a million dollars literally minimum. out of that account. Minimum. Mm -hmm. Minimum. Minimum. And if and, and where does that money go? It goes okay. It, it goes it, that money becomes a bond, uh huh. And then that bond goes out on Wall Street. They invest it, and Wall Street turns it. But listen, they have this. Profit. They have an account at the courthouse called a Chris account. This will blow your mind. <laughs> it, it, it is a court. <laughs> what do you mean? It's already blowing their mind. <laughs> it's called a Chris account. It's in your. It's in, my sheriff doesn't know it's there. I asked him, but it's a Chris account. Court. A court registry investment system. So he's the judge. You're the prosecutor. You both see a boy getting ready to smash a window outside. You don't stop him. You let him smash the window. 
because now you can bring him into your court and you can bond him. And when you bond him, you retire based on how much you bond people for. Could they go into your that, account? That's the judges. The judges. And the prosecutors, I think. So, they're so there's an incentive yes. yeah. to yeah. create yeah. more they criminals. Are, they are, you call them a beneficiary, they might, here, they might punch you. Here, here's, a, here's a realization. The IRS comes after you. Let's say uh, they come after you for $200,000, okay, in penalties, fines, and whatever. I'm so in trouble. Okay. So you go into court and you fight and you lose and you have to pay that 200000 or they confiscate your assets to gain the 200000 Not one penny of that 200000 goes into the treasury. All that money gets paid out to the judges, the prosecutors, the uh, IRS agent. It all gets paid out as, as bonus money for collection of that debt in, in uh, oppressing the general public. It's all, that's what it's all about. How you right. feeling, buddy? All right, now let us see it. <laughs> so this, so the, the count that you can't see is my main uh, social security QCIP. Just kind of aim it like this. I will do aim it, it like yeah. this. Oh, you mean a little bit of moving? No, you can aim it like this. I so will, like I that, will. that I just, keeps, I, I don't I, want you I, showing. I don't, okay. Why don't you just let us see it and not show the camera? I don't mind. I have it, I have it inked out. Okay. Oh, I have okay. stuff inked out that I don't want them to have. But what you're going to see is the bottom line was created in 615. All my other stuff was created years ago, like shows in 1984, 1985 was my initial, some of my initial accounts. This is a freaking brand new bond that it's in my social security number. You'll see the last four digits and then you'll see the, um, just let me know how I'm doing. No, here, aim it this way. Cause yeah, that's how you want to. Yeah. Wherever you guys want to do it, you can move the screen around. So you'll see the date to the right. That's the date it was created. My social security number, the last four digits is 5502. You'll see that's my CUSIP number, basically my account number. That's the symbol it's being traded on right now. So by rule, I can go access some of that investment now because it's mine. Is your social security number listed as a ticker symbol? Well, the your it's a CUSIP number that will- yeah, Look at Dave. Dave's like, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's a CUSIP number that creates a symbol. So it's one, you know, when you right, but like a ticker symbol is like, like Wall Street. It's like Wall yeah, Street. You see, it, this is this is from Fidelity. What? Yeah, this is from Fidelity. Here's you the, guys are all trillionaires. Here, 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 listen. Not trillionaires. You're hundreds. So there's the tri- same ticker. Hundred do- there, there's 100, the same thousand trillionaire. There's the same ticker number to the bottom left. You have a great triple A rating, by the way. <laughs> and there's there's the the right. And if you read up top, it says minimum one million dollars was bonded. So it's probably a six. Why is it a six Zoom million in. dollar bond? Okay, there's three bonds. There's a performance bond, surety bond, and a, a bid bond. And though each one of those bonds, okay, it's uh, SF 25, 26, 27. You guys can look this all up. It's in the federal codes. And um, each one of these bonds are $2 million each. Now, because the government's out of money, because they're not allowed to borrow money anymore, any longer, they are running these bonds up, these bid bond, performance bonds, surety bonds. They're running them up to ten million, hundred million, one billion dollars, and that's what they're bonding out. They're they're trying to they're trying to steal as much money, and this is theft out of the Sesta KV Trust as fast and as hard as they can get money out of them. Okay. I, I, I might be able to bridge something. <laughs> I have quick. two okay. questions. Okay. Can, you, can you can you just hold on real quick? Barely. You said to me, <laughs> when you get your certificate of live birth or whatever like that, your bond, you, and there's it's like a- Secretary of State registry. But, but there's like, you said, I, I forget the context of it. He's like, but you, like you double a penny every day. Oh yeah, a penny? So can you explain that to him? Maybe that'll help him understand the whole, yeah. wh- where all this money accrued. So uh, to me, a penny, a day, I know a penny a day. Okay, this is an analogy. This is not yeah, this exactly is, this what is just, on. This is an analogy. Just so people can wrap their head around it. When you do the physical math and you write it on a, on a loose leaf piece of paper, one, plus, one penny plus one penny is two. When you get down to line 30, it's over $5 million. So to me, when you give all your gold and silver back in the day to the government, and that's being, that's being grown, the interest in that is available from the Federal Reserve because they're the ones who fund our uh, our accounts. Is that right? Who funds? No, I, no, no, no. IMF. No. Who funds the no, accounts? No, 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 no. Yep. They. That's where they go. There's called a Treasury window at the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay. There's twelve banks, and they go to the Treasury Reserve window with your paperwork, 
that you signed, anything you signed, they can monetize. So they go to the treasury window and they take out 10 times the value that you signed for. This is called Modern Money Mechanics. There's a book out called Modern Money Mechanics. It explains all this. They take 10 times the value. They can loan out nine times the value. They have to keep one tenth back. So how do you have it? How do you have like an assessed value? Well, like, so remember, in other words, so when you say oh, there's remember that's what re- I'm saying. Remember that when you were born, they took a million dollars or seven hundred fifty thousand out of your mom's social security account, and they took seven hundred fifty thousand dollars out of your father's social security account and funded your account. So that's the seed money which they took out that to has Wall been Street. Accruing interest. Yeah. They take well, think about it. They take it out to the Wall Street and they burn and turn it for twenty well, eighteen years. Okay. And then at eighteen years, what happens? Well, then you go and get a job and you start earning income and you go to build a family and you buy a house. And so now they this all starts to accumulate because now there's this big wad of money sitting there because it had eighteen years to grow. Okay, oh. so here's my two quick questions. Sorry, I thought that was going to help you. It did, okay, but good. I still have two quick questions. Uh, can you guys show us how we can find our own accounts and look at them? Yeah, uh, we so, can. Yeah, is it pretty simple? And it's uh, not too difficult. Well, okay. He, he is said, there a website? He, he says that as as the Yoda. Okay? Yeah, he's like the force is. Yeah. <laughs> so every time I'm going, going. <laughs> every time I freaking get on because it makes a difference. You know what kind of format, whether on a Mac, it literally makes a difference. And, it, and maybe it's just because I'm a technical geek or a nim, I just, idiot. Idiots. Yeah, I have no idea because I it, it takes me a half hour to get on every time, and I'm finally learning how to save the portal, if you would, or the uh, mm-hmm. URL or whatever yeah. it's called, so I can routinely get on it. And it's just a confidence builder because uh, there's more out there. Uh, causes of action, right? So causes of action create more activity. If you have four or five degrees, you're getting your look on your on your diplomas. You're getting stinking CUSIP numbers written on there. When you create, when you buy and sell houses at the courthouse, you're creating a cause of action. When you get tickets or get bonded, like I did, I created a cause of action. That one million or six million dollar bond that got created, if I want to, that that's mine. That's listed as my you, ticker. You can make claims on it. That's my ticker. But here, think about this. Okay, <laughs> here's here's a real realization. Are we on Earth? Yeah, we, the, this is the fraud. This is the piracy going on in this country. And it actually is going on all around the world. But think about it. When you're in a local court on traffic court day, okay, when you go to court on traffic court day. 100 miles an hour. There's, there's what, 40, 60, 80 people in there for court for a $100 fine, $200 fine for a traffic violation. Well, they're bonding them out at $6 million a ticket per ticket, $6 million. I can't prove this, but there's a claim that you can fund the government for a thousand years with all the money that's in our accounts. I can't prove that, so, but enough people have said it to me that are teachers. I haven't heard it from him, but I heard it. Other, there's a ton of money back there. You can give each American a million dollars and fund a government for a thousand years with all the money that's behind us. We don't know it's there, so we don't access it. Here's my layman example. Okay. If you, Wait a minute before you yeah, go, go ahead. Every dollar that's taken out of the system, whether it's income tax, gasoline tax, uh, fines, fees, IRS penalties, whatever, 67% of that goes to the Vatican. 23%, 24% goes to the monarchy, the crown. And then 10% goes to the bar, to the international bar, to fund the bar internationally. That's where all the funding goes. Now, one penny of your tax dollar that is collected, I don't care whether it's gasoline tax, bread, the tax on bread, whether it's whatever, Okay. Now, one penny of those taxes goes to anything they say it goes to. It goes to those three organizations. If they need funding, like resurface the roads, rebuild the bridges, uh, build, uh, modernize the school systems, whatever, that comes out of your SESTA KQV accounts. They find out who in the area 
is there as uh, citizens, and then they harvest whatever funds they need out of those SESTK accounts at 10 times the value that they need to fund those accounts. Now remember, I'm innocent. Without a doubt, I've created no harm. I've committed no I've committed no crime as a 14th Amendment citizen. I've created no harm as as a man. But they just got me for $6 million. And so I remember my DA who I pushed to get elected because I thought, okay, we'll get this. But we're new. not done. We'll That's just six million out the gate. Okay. Now when he goes to the next court, they're gonna bond him again. And as he goes through the court system, they're keep bonding. Okay. By the time he gets done with this whole thing, this whole sh shenanigan, this whole facade, they'll probably have bond him out for probably five hundred million dollars. So I'm going to I'm gonna tell you now that I got this guy in. Well, I didn't get him in. I'm not that popular, but I worked hard because I'm thinking, okay, I, I want a different man in because the first guy wasn't helping me the da wasn't helping me with his um his other government officials that were acting up i'm like, i can prove it to him he goes oh, i can't be your personal attorney it has to be everybody being affected that's how i can help you they just committed tax uh they just they just collected taxes illegally that's everybody in the county there's everybody uh get an attorney get an attorney george get an attorney because if i keep doing things as a man he can't get he can't bond me so if I get an attorney to prove it and go argue with them for a year and a half or 10 years, that's a lot of friggin' bonding that they were doing to me. I wouldn't know they were doing, but now I know they're doing it. This is the wizard behind the curtain. I can have an attorney win my case in one day because what they're doing to me is so wrong. I can pay the top dollar attorney a hundred thousand dollars and probably win a million to $10 million for what they're doing to me. But I refuse, like if I do that, yeah, I'm rich, but then my kids will suffer someday. Because they're this this can't go on. They can't do this to me because I'm 51. I can fight this fight now. Can I fight it when I'm 71? When my kids come back to roost? I, this has got to be one here and now. So not 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 by George. By all, all of us. Of us. Yeah. We all have to I'm, get involved. I'm exposing myself because this I is why this I'm is more, here. This is this safety. is why I'm here. I'm here to unite everybody this in is, this cause. This is safety in numbers. If I just did this on my old lonesome self. I mean, look what they just did to me. They, they, they're, they're causing strife in my life. They're waiting for, I don't even carry my, my, my self-protection anymore because they just want an error. They want conflict. I don't carry, a, I'm a carpenter. I don't even carry my razor knife. Or I don't carry nothing. I, you have to come in peace and honor. You've got to be in peace. You, got to, you could put a gun in my mouth. I'm not fighting back. So there are people from Tunkhannock that, that, that know you of you uh, peripherally. Mm -hmm. and they're like oh that george is crazy and you know he's just some, he starts his, he starts problem and i'm like have you ever talked to him yeah have you ever sat and listened to him yeah i have some and that, they never have and no. there's, there's only a few that that i know because that won't make time because i offer to speak to anybody you know but there's that you be i had 17 people in a little tiny courtroom from around pennsylvania right. not just on camera yeah. and they are now they right. made that a court of record because I get to take that transcript that I'm going to give to you, and you're going to turn it into out uh, into digital stuff or whatever it's called, <laughs> deep fakes with your computer wizardry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all deep fakes, man. It's all going to be. Uh, and then, and then it's going to be a court of record that I'm going to be able to bring to the next court and put it on the record that these guys just lied and this <clears throat> this judge made this error, and we're, they're all in dishonor. Why keep perpetuating? No, we're not going to do that. Okay. What we're going to do is I go. Want to. I know you want to, but we're not going to do that. We're going into a court of claim in common oh, law, yeah, 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 yeah. and we're going to bring charges and press our claim on I, the individual man and woman because they violated their immunity. Well, let me interrupt under for a the law. Shut up, Yoda. <laughs> listen, yo, Luke would have got a lightsaber up his <laughs> ass. If he so I, but listen, I, but but I have to be ready to because this is what we have to do and i will do this so i have to be on the offense and the defense at the same time so as we're going if you would on the offense and getting our claims in to try to shut this down properly so everybody can stay in honor but they want my money so bad you know i was there as a man and they still got my money and i have resignation of my agent and they still got my money they basically put a yeah, gun in my we mouth can, we can file 1099a 1099c and make claim on that on those bonds he, can I, you access that money mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you may not get it paid to you but if you file claims on it and then bring notice to the irs 
under the criminal investigation division, then they investigate and they bring fines against them for a list of false solicitation of funding. So have you ever heard of any of this stuff? I still want, like, what? I still want to be prepared. I still want to turn that meeting. <laughs> it's going great. I want to turn that meeting into a translation so I can in turn. Sorry guys for the wake up. <laughs> so I can affidavit every uh, affirmation, everybody and create uh, a court of record. So if, if I do wind up in the next level, you have to be prepared for the worst case scenario. They, they do drag me up there because they want a few more million from me because ultimately who the hell can find, there's no crime. There's no crime. So no, they just want you in the system. The law states that you have to have a verifiable claim by a man or woman stating that you've been either owe a debt, a wrong, a harm, or a trespass. If there is none of that, they have no claim. That's law. And that's a fact. That's lawful law. That's not legalese. I have seven contracts okay. that say that. So let me ask you guys a question. So like after you were on, after one or two other people are on, you know, uh, you know, every Sunday my brother-in-law comes over and he and, and my wife and him, you know, well, the three of us will talk about things and he and I love to talk politics. And, you know, I have a couple of friends that are lawyers and, and I asked everybody uh, some questions around this. And some people gave me pushback uh, on some things and, and I just wanted – it's, you know, the old adage, there's three sides to the story, yours, mine, and the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's like, you know, I'm hearing one side. Okay, I want to hear the other side. I want to mm -hmm. get to the middle ground of, you know, where is this? The number one thing that I was like, okay, this is the big thing that I could see being a hiccup and I couldn't get any kind of answer to it was at what point going through this process does a judge say okay if you're not going to recognize yourself as a citizen under the legal whatever you know the as a legal u.s citizen if you want to stand be stand alone as a sovereign citizen no at what point no it's sovereign that, citizen is a terrorist okay so you're what's the word i'm looking sovereign, for sovereign either a sovereign or you're a citizen but you cannot be a sovereign citizen okay so so if you if you were saying like, I take myself outside of the authority of whatever you are, I would be a man that has sovereignty. <laughs> right. I'm so a at man what who point, has sovereignty. So at what point would they say, fine, renounce your citizenship? No, you don't have to. No, we're not renouncing our citizenship. We're just standing on what is our rights, our unalienable rights. Now, some people will argue that if you do some of these other jobs, you right? understand they're in fraud. They're committing fraud. Uh -huh. They're in violation of their oath of office. They're in violation of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. That is the law of the land. Mm -hmm. You understand Article 6, Clause 2 and 3 states that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And all those public officials are bound. I want to bring something bound. Down. I want to buy those oaths. True. So I guess. Well, I guess. Uh, well, check this out. I you're not. You're not arguing. I don't want to be a citizen. I don't want to follow your rules. Your argument is you're violating your rules. Right. Do Do you know who the first citizens were? You remember who I told you the first citizens were? When we kicked, the Greeks. When we kicked the <laughs> British's asses years mm -hmm. ago. And the king's like, well, here, don't make me take my my navy and my yeah, my yeah. army home. I'll leave them behind. They'll be your municipal servants. You know, we'll rebuild your roads. Your they'll rebuild the courthouses they burnt down, the churches they burnt down. We'll keep our maritime, uh, if you would, uh, laws in place to keep commerce going, so we can build up revenue. So when they kept all those people in place, we had to make them, in fact, U.S. citizens because they weren't born in America. You were a Pennsylvanian. You were a Pennsylvanian. I was. This British soldiers that got left behind as our pen dot workers, that were our first the, uh, municipal servants, they became municipal servants, U.S. citizens, municipal servant. So as life goes on, all of a sudden we get lured into checking that box to be a U.S. citizen. None of us are U.S. citizens. We're freaking Pennsylvanians, Floridians, naturally. So, you know, if you don't like changing your passport saying I'm not a U.S. citizen, when you go to get your citizenship on your, if you go get a passport, you have to honestly not. Right. Yes. To that U.S. citizen. That would be foolish because, you know, your mother's a U.S. A citizen is domiciled in Washington, D.C. It's right in the codes. It's right in the codes. He's domiciled. Domiciled yeah. in Washington. In other words, you live in Washington, D.C. So to be a U.S. citizen, you either live in Washington, D.C. or you're born in Washington, D.C. Or you came here and were made a citizen. 
Yeah, well, as, that, well? as okay. an alien, yeah. As a resident alien of the United States of America. All right. So, man, that's a lot to unpack. We're at two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to suggest, I'm like, okay, I feel like this is a lot... You know, it's like, this is a lot of steak. This isn't, you know, this isn't peanut butter and jelly. No. This is a lot for people to digest. This I, is, this is a, the very tippy, tippy, tippy tip of the iceberg. Guys, part two of the trilogy slash quadrilogy was fantastic. <laughs> we had the side story with, uh, what's his name? Jamie, was it? Yeah. 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 That, that hurt my brain for like a couple of weeks after having what was, you guys. Was Jamie that. doing the, like the, uh, the policy, the code, the statutes of the school? Mm -hmm. uh, he bit. was going through a lot of, um, they should operate law legally, lawfully, lawfully, and they're not doing that. No. no. Um, what's what's okay? You just had court yesterday, yep. right? And I know, like, there is no way that two and a half hours or, or is going to give enough time. But we have to make it so people can digest it sure, a yep. little bit, yep. and you know, hopefully they'll be like, "Is there more?" Um, so I have a feeling there might be more coming. <laughs> so what, what in the next, in the next week, you, you, you want to set court. up a camp? Uh, yeah, but with <laughs> Church <right>. of truth. <laughs> um, you, you have another court date coming up. I have it. So I have another court. Date. Cause, cause be, and I didn't mean to interrupt. I asked mm -hmm. you a question that I'm like, Shh. um, <laughs> School board member. I, I <laughs> not yet. Um, well, you're good. Because, pra good practice, by the way. Because you're because what you're trying to do is you're trying to basically be treated like a man. Mm -hmm. and, no, no, no. Okay, we you, are treated like a man. Well, I I want I want that too, but I think he wants them to recognize and no, respect. All he has the, to do is claim it. If they don't wish to comply, then we. He's we, already done what I need to do. He's already done it. He's done He's done things in his lifetime that he doesn't want me to do because he knows I don't have to do it. He might have spent fifteen to $30,000 to do things I'm about to do. So his his expertise started here, and now he's becoming a laser beam. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. And he's caught me here, and he's like, bullshit, jump up here. Don't waste all that time and money, right? Get right to here. This is like I always explained it before I met him. I have no idea, and, I'll, and I, I have an idea now. But before I met him, the last time I was here, I would tell you, I have no idea what's going on, but I'm going to, I'm going to go this far and tell you it's clear up to here. There's no mines. Yeah. Now, if you follow me on that path, you know, there's no mines. Now, if you veer left or right and something goes wrong, don't blame me because I brought you here. Now, however, there could be more than one path. There's another guy, really nice guy. Uh, he's on the internet. Dr. D, I think calls himself, but he, he talks on a different path. But he's still a good teacher, and I like him, and I like this analogy. He said, there's a rock wall in front of you. You got to get on the other side, because what you want is on the other side. I can follow his path, which went to the right, or I can go to the left, or I can go under if I got if I have to, or go over, or go through it. But as long as you get on the other side, it's, there's not one right path. So even as he fine tunes us down to a laser beam, there's actually even a smaller laser beam that we're getting to because every day yeah, he's always in class. So what the frig's he in class for? He's Yoda, right? So why is Yoda in class? Because he knows he's literally doing things for us. He's like, don't do that class until I get through it. He'll call stuff like crossing over. Like before you cross over into this thing, let me make sure it's right. Because That's a good term. So he'll cross over into something it's his most productive way. And on the way here, I said to him, and I, it was my own accord. I just felt I needed to say this to him to, to relax him a little bit because he'll never give you legal advice or lawful advice. He can only mentor you, right? It's what you do. It's the whole disclaimer thing. This is for entertainment purposes only. I told him, I says, I love you. I care for you. Whatever happens to me, it was my choice. Right, because that eases his burden and potentially even teaches me better. Right? Yeah, sure. Because he's not trying to say this mother effer. He's going to do something stupid, get himself in trouble. He's going to blame me and and take down my whole, you know, my Yoda approach. Yeah, I, I just came up with Yoda as a funny. Yeah. So um, learn often you must. <laughs> <laughs> I know this That's is a lot because I can't pull a single Star Wars reference. <laughs> you know, my brain is broken. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh man. But um. All right. So what? So, See, the thing that like really baffles me is that like this is stuff that's been happening 
since the beginning and no one has really you asked that me. i'm aware of yeah. decided to figure out a way to educate everybody in a mask i, I that's, believe that's what my job is i believe it's out of necessity i first started this journey because i knew i couldn't survive one lawsuit right and i'm not proud of my station in life but i could not afford one lawsuit right. i can't afford what i'm doing right now because right. my wife is like Brr. and yeah. if i just if i just go i can work i could probably make three to six thousand dollars over the next two weeks swinging a hammer yeah but then i, I will neglect what i need to do to get ready for carl smith and tunkanic you ask me what's next. I need witnesses, right? I need just silent observers to come to Tunkanic on the 22nd at nine o'clock to sit in that courtroom. Did you ask me to air this before? Or after yeah, you can do it before. I'm just kidding. Okay. You can do it before. Right. Whatever okay. happens, happens because this is all happening organically. So okay. it, to me, it's the right thing. I, I hope you guys, I hope you never witness dishonor from me. And if you do, you pull me aside. You say, I witnessed dishonor. You punch me in my face because I'm a Marine and I know sometimes that'll straighten you out. But if you ever witness dishonor from me, you tell me because I can never, I never want to do dishonor. Your whole idea is never to have the intent of doing anything wrong. That's intent is like, it's so important. Yeah. That's why when I give these people notice, I say, is it your intent to harm me? And if you don't respond, then it's evidence that your intent is to harm me. So it helps me build my case. And, it, and nobody ever rebuts it. Just friggin' rebut it. Offer me an apology. Give me, you know, give me a front page. We're sorry we embarrassed your family. They can't do it because their statutory attorneys are dragging them into that hole. Get me bonded. Not only do they want my money, if you would, as I have displayed to you, but could you imagine two more Georges? Maybe 10? Could you imagine the, 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 I can't. I don't I, think the people of Tunkanic are prepared for that. <laughs> it, j- if, well, we're talking about the United States. Of oh, America. no, no, no. But that's, that's, if yeah, I, to make a if joke. I was, if I was, <laughs> I get that. If There's I was, ten Georges. Oh shit. <laughs> if I, if I was my opposition, if I was my opposition, the, the court system right now, because my school board has made an effort to get me into their court system, not knowing what they're doing, because those knuckleheads don't know what you're doing. But sure enough, the DAs are like, yeah, just get him in here somehow. I don't know. Trump some shit up. Who knows what they say? I'd love to have freaking microphones knowing what they're warring against, but I can't yeah. have that. But they're warring against me. The police have freaking weekly freaking meetings with the school board because they're trumping up alarm where there is a no, a no alarm so they could put instruments in place. They will not let me win. So potentially not winning is going to be my outcome, but I still win. Because I made contact. No, 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 no. We're going into a, a common law court under constitutional law and we will win. Okay. And I'm sorry for degrading. So there's two things happening here. Offense and defense. Offensively, we're going to win. They may try to ramrod me through their system. It's called railroading. And if you look at the definition of railroading in Black's Law Dictionary, it's point A to point B. That, that They already know what they're doing. They need my money. And quite frankly, there's some politicians and some DAs that need me to shut the F up because in fact, there's trouble if you have any more me where other parents are like, wait a minute, they're my property. My my daughter and my son are my property. You will not do this. They're screwed. So you got to understand that the Bargill Court, that's the administrative court that's currently in operation. That's this, the Article 2 court under military rule. All right. In 1863, they had the Liberty Act passed by Abraham Lincoln, President Lincoln, which put us under military democracy. And with the creation of military democracy in uh, 1933, they brought in administrative courts under Article Two, under the uh, under the Commander in Chief, the executive order of the corporation. All right, when they created that. When they created that, that allowed them to create a whole court system under Article 2. The Bar Gill, by law, by law of the United States Constitution, is not allowed to enter an Article 3 court. So they had to create a separate court in order for the Bar Gill to operate. So under Article 2 of the executive branch, they created an administrative court. That's where we're all under municipal, municipal article three, article, I'm sorry, article two courts. And they're, they're creating false, fraudulent court system outside of the constitution. They're and, not lawful. I mean, it just seems like to me, it's like, there's not, 
Like I always ask myself this question: If the forefathers were miraculously time traveled back today, I think they'd all look at it. At they'd us be and go, barfing. What, what did on you the, do? They'd be barfing on the floor. They would be freaking up chucking. Like you ruined it. <laughs> yeah, you destroyed it. Yeah, the idea of the idea of being free. But here's what happened: the people allowed it. Okay, the blame doesn't fall on the bar guild. The people, the blame doesn't fall on our legislator. It doesn't fall on the international bar, the international bankers. It falls on us because we were given the tools, all the tools, to protect ourselves from the tyranny of the government. And there's five branches of the government, not three. Two of those branches is in the Bill of Rights, and two of those is to empower the people to hold the government accountable. I'm an idiot. What are the other two branches? The right to assemble, which is a government branch, the first branch of the government, the, the right for the people to assemble. We are the people. And to hold the government accountable for the actions of the government. We're the government. And the second uh, branch of the government is in Article 7 of the Bill of Rights, Amendment 7, not Article 7, Amendment 7 of the Bill of Rights, which is the right of the people, us, to form a common law grand jury without part of the judicial system. It's a separate branch of government, and we, the people, can form a grand jury of 25 people in a grand jury bring down an indictment or a presentment and that cannot be overturned by any court of law of the land. Let me not hide this anymore. First of all, Scalia backs up what he's saying Yeah, in modern times because he made some opinions about William this. versus USA 1992. It's a Supreme Court case. Modern. Says that this is, the, it's the right, he said it's the fourth branch of the government to assemble. So let it not be hidden anymore, but we have assembled on the land in Wyoming County. So this will be the first time it's being aired, but we have assembled on the land in Wyoming County. You ever hear those people say, the dog is barking three times. What? The dog is barking three times. Like a code? We, uh, you ever hear that? I hear people doing that sometimes in their stupid uh, <laughs> stupid podcasts, not like not ones like this. Not like these. Worst worst highbrow. <laughs> yeah. So in this highbrow uh, high podcast, we are, Pinkies up. we are assembled on the land. We are assembled on the land. And oh. we are assembled on the land yeah. in Lima County. What, what that means is that they have taken us uh, since 1933, probably before that, they put us out to sea in maritime law, admiralty law, okay? And the assembly has come back onto the land and under uh, constitutional jurisdiction and place us, the assembly, back on the land, okay? That's what's transpired. I think, you know, I have a really good friend who was in the military, he was a uh, a military contractor and he was a bounty hunter. And I always ask him, I say, what do you, I said, what do you think needs to happen? He goes, every he, this is his simplest answer. He goes, everyone needs to rediscover America again. Right. You know, exactly. I think everybody forgot. Yep, they have. Uh, I'd like you to meet him someday. He's a good man. Um, George, I'm, I, you, got, if the, you have any final words? Yeah, by the way, there's monkey skulls coming here. Oh, she, oh, oh, I think you're showing. I, are you on I, Amazon right now? Oh, am I not supposed to do that? <laughs> I love it. No, it's, I uh, shop on Amazon through most podcasts. I, I will not yeah. be drinking out of you. <laughs> we you, have regular glasses. We no, just, no, no, no. We just, I want to drink. I don't know what you do. With now your we mon- want the monkey skull. I don't know. Well, what here's you the do thing. The I just came skulls. up with a slogan. He just and texted I really it to appreciate me. these cup offers. Pickies up and paper cups. Dave, where can people find you? Are you accessible? I am. Or are you off the grid? <laughs> uh, no. Um, I have a website called uh, academyofcommonlaw.com. It is set up for uh, virtual learning. We have uh, uh, access to a library and uh, self-teaching t- uh, on all subjects, uh, most of it in law. And then we have special uh, set-aside projects like Law Common to I, learning how to be your own self-law and hold all public officials accountable under the law. We have uh, how to do debt elimination, how to remove yourself, uh, remove you and your car from as private conveyance and uh, remove yourself from the uh, 
registrar in the in the uh, Department of Transportation and return what is Caesar's onto Caesar, such as driver's license, registration, um, uh, your title, returning that all to them. And uh, we have the paperwork and the license plates and everything that you need to be able to operate without any of that uh are there special license plates? No, it's uh, you can make up your own. Yes. Or is it yeah. just like a big middle finger? Yeah, <laughs> well, it could be. GF, but, GFY six nine. <laughs> okay, you uh, okay, guys? You don't want to flash the red flag in front no, of I'm the bull any I'm more kidding, than kidding. you need to. Okay, no, you don't want to. You don't want to. It's just be a the Wu Tang symbol, yeah. right? Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, we also show how to dissolve your mortgage, how to stop paying income tax, stop paying property taxes. Uh, just those are just a few of the things that we're offering through the, the Academy the, of Wait, hang on. Law. The glass monkey uh, skulls are not available. So I have a friend in Somalia. Is still, he's going to give me the real ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ask any more questions. After I, I want to know okay, nothing so, else. So real, so real quick, and, and you have had success at all the things that you just talked about. Yeah, my car. Just go out and look at my car. So, so I mean, so just to say that like, oh, just for anybody out there, the naysayers, it's like uh, Dave's doing it. Dave's done mm -hmm. all those things. That you said you've been doing well, it for what, 31 years? 35 years. There's I have not thing. paid income tax. Uh, I've not paid property taxes in 11 years. I've not paid income taxes in 35 years. Uh, the only tax I pay is sales tax. And that's only because I don't want to argue with the clerk. It's one thing. <laughs> it's, it's That makes a lot of sense. It's one thing to have secondhand knowledge, which we all just got. Yeah. But when you can start dealing with firsthand experiences, that's why I'm not doing anything I'm doing on purpose, but I know the outcome is I'm going to have an experience, good or bad. I don't know what winning and losing is in court because the reality of it is if I lose, it's good for everybody else. If I win, it's good for everybody else. There's no win or lose. I know technically we're going to win in claims court, no trouble, but they'll do what they want in their freaking administrative court. Yeah, and I don't care. I don't care which proven. way it goes. Yeah. I truly don't care because it's a win. It's contact. Make mm -hmm. constant contact with your opposition so you can learn your what, weaknesses and theirs. What we're doing in claims court, we're not just winning we're going to remove these bad officials from government. We're going to take their bonds. Definitely. Air every this man, my every man since 1792, <laughs> since 1792 has to be bonded. And we are going to remove their bonds. And when you remove their bonds, they can never be bonded again, which means they can never be a public official ever again. So if they are aspiring to move up in the chain, in the food chain, as a public official, their careers are over with. I love you. I miss you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great meeting you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only one. There's an organization out there called Bonds for the Win, and they are pushing the same agenda. Okay. You remove the bonds. For instance, this is how this works. This is what makes this... What I'm, what I'm showing people, academyofcommonlaw.com, we're showing them common law to I, how to go after a judge who has harmed you. What's Think about this in family court when you got a child protection service problem and the judge has uh, moved against you in that court. He's harmed you or that woman's harmed you. Now you can bring a claim against that man or woman for a personal harm. Do you know that the police officers size up their shirts two sizes to fit their bulletproof vest? Yeah. So you need to think about that when you're buying your shirts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like I like how it's all fun and games yeah. when we talk about this shit. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Somebody's gonna shoot Dave. Um, <laughs> what? So uh, uh, the twenty second. Where? where not, 20 how second. can people get in touch with you just to stay updated? Is okay, there because so, you're because I know you're affiliated with nothing, involved with yeah, nothing. Yeah, you have to have no titles. That's one of the biggest things. Shake your titles so you can stand better on your square. You can do it with all your titles. It, they'll just keep coming at you though. If you're a business owner and all this weird stuff, they'll keep trying to come. You know, you got to start doing things in trust. Get rid of your hooks because they'll come at you every different direction they can because they need to get their slaves back in line. They need to shut you down so you can't be successful. I, to me, I'm successful either way. Whether I win or lose, claims court, we're going to win because it's a no-brainer. They're harming me. This is the easiest thing. But in their little system, they're dragging me through. They determine that, right? Because I, I don't have that outcome. Only they do. 
Then I also determine whether they stay in office, whether they get claims filed against them for the harm. They're so gonna how do. are they going to get a hold of you? They're going to get a hold of me <laughs> using my... Uh, my they, Thanks, do not give out your phone number. <laughs> you almost did that last time. Do not give out your phone what, number. What was yours? <laughs> so just do, do me on the email at 570... Oh, no, Jesus. <laughs> I almost did it. I'm so not afraid, but I gotta be. So it's it's my name, George G E O R G E U H A S Y U H A S. So George Uhas, the number seven at gmail.com. Um, is there any groups that we could recommend? Yeah, Maybe. the assembly, the assemblies. The people need to come together and form assemblies. They can they can get in touch with me. Yeah. Uh, through uh, Academy Common Law, and I will help them set up a lawful assemblies in their communities that's that's the that's if, the that's the solution to this country if you're down in this county you can still be a member of our um assembly to be a jurat because in fact we want you know you want to be able to put a jury together <clears throat> so i would let any one of you mint well maybe not him but I'd let all you guys be on my jury <laughs> i don't blame him so neither do I <laughs> because wh whether I I'm being whether I'm somebody's aggressing me or I'm aggressing somebody else I would want good people to be on the jury that are honorable people because you get the right answer you get the right outcome they get to nullify both the law and the penalty you know so that's what you want there's no greater court in the world than a jury of your peers none nobody can overturn it let me, let me tell you some successes that we're having we have the Attorney General of the State of Ohio, Secretary of State of the State of Ohio, and the court, county court, I'm not going to make that designation, but we have stopped them dead in their tracks of trying to close a health, a health food store down, and we have, they have backtracked. They have even come for $800,000 fine against this store, and they had to retract the $800,000 fine. Was that from shutting down during COVID or? No. Or well, this started before COVID, okay. but uh, that's just the health, the health department of this county. We've also an uh, taxation department of the, of the county. That's just one. I have a, a client in uh, Dallas, Texas that had a $50,000 verdict against her by American Express. And we overturned that. And uh, not only over and turned it, we put the, the attorneys on notice that fought the case in court and they are so scared that they gave the case away to another. They sold the project to another law firm so that they could, they could get away from us. Okay. And that's just a couple and I can go on and on and on. So will you will, I mean, obviously you guys got to come back. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I'd love to. Because I want to yeah, still around. You guys yeah, are talking to Dave. <laughs> Re remember, I need people to show up at the Wyoming County Courthouse on 22nd, which is Thursday, 9 o'clock in the morning, to be silent observers. Um, if you if you can't come there. How many How many do you need? 20, I, 20, isn't 20? No, you want to, you can have four to 12. I want 12 because that's a jury of my peers in my mind. So I create that number for a couple of reasons. People back out. Yeah. So just, just get there if you can. If it's overcrowded, you know, I'll excuse some people who, who can just be observers in the hallway to catch on to all this other rat. There's, there's rhetoric that was going on all around the last courthouse, right? People were sitting there. They thought they were there for a jury or some other duty, but they were overhearing my opposition say some stuff and they weren't there to spy on, but they were just openly talking about it in public. If it's private, they should have been in private. So it all works out. When you do things in public and you have full transparency, I want 12 people everywhere I freaking go. Yeah. Don't you dare tell me I said that because you know I didn't because I'm either wired up or I have witnesses everywhere I go. I don't go anywhere without being wired up or having witnesses because they lie through their teeth. Yeah. And it's it's unbelievable. They're human beings. <clears throat> I final thoughts. I'm hungry. <laughs> um really? I thought for sure you'd have like <laughs> Um, I, I, my mind's in a million places right now. Like so they just, bad. they were just, it was like trying to drink from a fire hose. Oh, yep. um, I apologize. I have been accused of that many, many, no, no, many no. Times. In a good way. Yeah. I think, uh, I think the world needs people to push back. Mm -hmm. I think the world, right, correct. I, I think the, cause if you don't, 
You're subjugated. Yeah, I can't fight this fight by myself. I look I forward to having ten percent of the population, like like the revolution, right? The Revolutionary War had ten percent. If we get twenty because of new technology, it was just it was just ten percent of people who said I do not it comply. Was, yeah, it was three percent right. who. If fought. I can get nine million people to stand up behind me, well, Dave, you got to get on TikTok then and <laughs> do this, okay? If I can get nine million people to stand up and do law, come and die, and stand there square, this is over with. This is literally over with in this country. And, See, it's, and it's probably more peaceful, more pleasant, more creative, correct. more yep. uh, definitely a lot more love. Don't let anybody right. talk you that, that it's going to be unlawful. It will be more lawful because you accept the fact that the corporate police who need to police policy, in fact, should police the employees who are misbehaving. The, the criminals that are misbehaving are not being man and woman. They're being criminals. They're being... Elder racketeering. Being, they need help, so go help them. But the people who freaking want to be free, they want to live to be left alone. Who don't want to bother anybody. Yeah, right. they just want to be left alone to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. The Amish got it right. It's unfortunate they, they don't mind. How yeah, they but they're them. being ha- harassed right now. Yeah. Oh, with their farms and stuff. Oh, like, yeah, oh, it's terrible. They're, it they're, is terrible. They're, people are, are, they're under we're, attack we're right learning now. From them, like I love the Amish. I went there for my wedding. And now I realize that I love them even more because I know I, if I can pick their brain, they just don't want to contract with people. They don't, you get a spin ticket. No, I don't want to contract with you. Thank you anyways. Me and my horse are going, you know, it's that simple. We don't want to contract. A speeding ticket is a contract. Their contract will be in that court system. They need it, my signature. Hmm. And if I didn't give them the signature to release that money, they were going to put me in jail. What is that to you guys? Does that sound like a crime? It is. It's harm. They it sounds like everybody just needs to learn to live, laugh, love. All right. Hmm. <laughs> Did you just come up with the title? No, it's right behind you. I keep trying to. That's right. Uh, uh, George Uhas. Inspiration. <laughs> George Uhas, Dave Roberts, thank you so much for being yeah. here. Uh, keep doing what you do, guys. I don't, if I'm, I feel more, I feel more comfortable with you guys doing this than if it was just me or Mike or Dan. <laughs> we'd be in big trouble. So. Oh, we'd screw it up for sure. Yeah. Dan, you want to say it? Listen, you did. What a week it was. <laughs> God save the queen, man. God save the queen. What was that? God save uh, that was Joe Biden ending his remarks in Connecticut with God save the queen, man. Uh, 55 uh, minutes this ago. was a blast. That was 55 minutes ago? Yeah, look at me breaking news. Blast.